Land the hands. Senior Bandit linebacker Andrew Woodard is a torpedo. He's going to be flying around the field tonight making plays. He had a 98-yard pick six last week. Another run stop for sophomore Mike linebacker Jabar Chambers. He had six tackles last week. In the secondary, look for junior free safety Brandon Bendoff to make an impact and making an impact right there and picking up the first down once again. The Theodore Bobcats quick carry by Tavar Sullivan just called his name in the opening. Sullivan tried to hold and haul in that pass by Rigby, but it was no good. So the first pass attempt is no good for the Theodore Bobcats. And when you start talking about now a third down and short situation, it's right where Eric Carrier and this offense led by Kendall Gibson want to be. That is calling it 33. It looks about third and one. And it's enough for Jenkins. He picks up the first down into the red zone. Theodore moves trying to pick up their first score of this ball game. Well, again, we mentioned in the top of the broadcast, Theodore loves to pound the football, and Murphy's going to have to load the box. And when they do load that box, you're going to have to have your sure-handed wide receivers catch the football as they were able to spread it across. Rigby was and throw for three touchdowns, and we know he has the ability to pass the ball, especially when you load the box. Ball on the 12-yard line, little play action. Rigby rolls out to the left. That pass is going to be incomplete. Murphy put the pressure on him to roll him out. Second and 10 coming up here for the Bobcats. Outstanding pressure by the Murphy Panther defense. And when you start talking about making them uncomfortable, you create long down and distance situations for Theodore. But again, credit that front defensive line for getting after Rigby on that last play. Second and 10 for Theodore coming up. More play action as they go across the middle. That pass is brought in by Trey Glover, and Murphy defender was right there with it. Five receptions, 169 yards, and one touchdown. So you know that he can catch the football out of the backfield also for Theodore. Now they're at a shorter, another third down, but last time it was third and one. This time it looks like it's going to be third and two right inside the red zone area, right at the five-yard line now. It is pretty short. They can pick up the first down without scoring. Cam Pruitt in the backfield next to Rigby. They give it to Pruitt. He's a big boy, and he barrels in. That's a touchdown, five-yard touchdown run for Cameron Pruitt, and Theodore was first on the board. Well, it was a very successful opening drive to where you saw a couple of third down opportunities for Theodore, but they were able to convert on money down, which actually leads to another rushing touchdown. Five yards out, Theodore scratches the scoreboard first. Miguel Frias on for the PAT. Kick is up, and Frias is still perfect on the season with extra points. Theodore's on top early, seven to nothing over Murphy. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. Welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Al Wheat, Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. Theodore opens up with their first drive and they take it to the house. On top seven to nothing. We have a great night so far here at Lad People Stadium. Weather's cooperating as well. Want to let you know we're sorry having some technical difficulties as we're getting the ball game going. 
Got to get those straightened out in the truck and want to thank the crew for doing that. On the return, Jalen Etney for Murphy. Gets Murphy up. Take a look at the scoring drive right there. 44 yards, eight plays with a five-yard score, Corey, by the Bobcats. Well, with them getting on the scoreboard first, now it's going to see if Murphy's able to have great ball control, as I mentioned on my checklist. And it's going to be imperative that Murphy try to milk some of this clock because you definitely don't want to put your defense right back out on the field. But, again, one of our impact players is the quarterback, number four, T.K. Barnett, 5'10", 175-pound senior. Let's see what he has to offer with this Murphy offense. And you're right about the shoes, Corey. They are definitely uh, lit tonight here at Lab People Stadium. First and 10 ball on the 26. Barnett's just going to keep it on the RPO as Theodore is going to tackle him for a loss. There's the whistle coming right there. Take a look at the Murphy offense. Senior quarterback T.K. Barnett, he's the leads the Panthers on the field, the most dynamic athlete on the team and a playmaker described by John McKenzie. If he's not running, look for him to pass to junior wideout Jalen Entley. He's a speedster. Up front, the Panthers are a big and experienced bunch, but they will need to use their hefty guards to create some space. Senior left guard Christian Boyd checks in at 6'4", 325. And senior right guard Malachi Howard is six feet even and 325. Murphy averages a whopping, Corey, 301 pounds across the offensive line. Where's the beef? Well, we Man. know it's here at Lad People Stadium on Murphy's offensive line. And we'll see if they're able to protect and get any type of push and get into that second level of the Theodore defense. And it looks like we're going to have a stoppage Murphy. in play. Murphy's called a timeout, so he called timeout. Let's take a look at the defense of the Bobcats. They play a 3-4 with senior nose guard Jordan Bolden leading a front that averages 245 pounds. Bolden had a 26-yard pick six last week. Helping him out is 6-1 senior defensive end Travis Bendoff leading the team in tackles at senior linebacker Damon Jones-Sullivan. He'll be all over the field. In the secondary, look for senior cornerback Jordan Casher to be on pick patrol. He stands six feet and has plenty of big game experience. And Corey, as you look at the defensive lineup, nothing but upperclassmen for Coach Eric Collier. Well, that's what the reason they've only given up three points through two weeks of high school football. And you start talking about defense wins championships, and they take a lot of pride. And that defense is led by defensive coordinator Randy Larson. And when you start talking about he and Coach Collier and the cohesiveness that this entire Theodore Bobcat staff has, it's second to none in all of Southwest Alabama. Coach John McKenzie calls the early timeout. Calm his crew down. This is Murphy's second ball game. They had a bye the first week. So last week they opened up against Sarah Land. Empty set here. Edney goes into motion. They toss it out to him. He has some room as he gets up to the 31-yard line. So it'll be third and long coming up here for the Panthers. Well, what do you do? You get your playmakers in space. Jalen Edley, the 5'9", 161-pound junior, had four receptions a week ago for 31 yards. And Landon Collier from his inside linebacker position, 5'8", 200-pound senior, makes the stick. And Al, it's going to bring up third down and five yards to go for the Panthers. They're about even with the sticks right here, trying to always stay in front of the sticks. Running back to the right, Kentrell Wheeler, I'm sorry, to the left of Barnett. They set up the screen. Wheeler cannot bring it in. So it's going to send Murphy to fourth down. And that's one of those passes that you just have to look in and complete because it's an outstanding offensive call by Cedric Smith, who is the offensive coordinator for the Murphy Panthers because you have the pass rush upfield and you have the blockers that were set up to get him some additional yards just not able to come away with that completion. Fourth down coming up for Murphy. Enoch Arakozi back to punt, setting up to field. Trey Glover and Tavares Sullivan. They're standing at about their 37 yard line. That punt is blocked by Theodore. 
picked it right off the foot of Ira Cozy, and they recovered it. That was a live ball on the move going to the end zone. One of the big fellas Bindolf. for – That's Travis Bendoff. The big fella for Theodore scoops it up, and that's going to be a touchdown. Special teams miscue that just really happened on the wrong side of the field, but Travis Bendoff is able to have a scoop and score. It will officially be 31 yards. You look at the pressure. Great job of taking it off of the foot of the kicker by the Theodore Bobcats. Jordan Casher, the six foot, 175 pound senior with the block. And you look at the scoop and score by Travis Bendov. Six more points on the board for the Bobcats. Bobcats opening up early here on the Panthers. Friaz's extra point is good. Corey, that was an outstanding play. And Bendoff, Johnny on the spot, knowing that the ball was still live and went to it rather than one of the Murphy players just falling on the ball. It's one of the situations to where Bendoff had an option to whether he could have fallen on the football or whether he wanted to go ahead and scoop and score. When he did scoop up the football, he was running in the wrong direction. He you look at Casher, grab it right off of Enoch's foot. He's able to see the spiral, the, unability, the inability to scoop it up. Bendoff's running the wrong direction, but quickly, when he breaks that second tackle, he goes ahead and calls it to the house. He makes that house call for six points more for the Bobcats. And I give him I give him a five on the layout dive into the end zone there, Corey. I'm, I'm going to be the rushing judge. But he didn't do the Allen Page, the famous Minnesota Vikings player who ran the wrong way and ended up giving a safety. So uh, he got his bearings and went south. Well, I say this, 220 pounds, when it starts going in the wrong direction, it's hard to get it going back in the right direction. And then at the end, his balance, he was able to punch it in for That's six. True. But our score, 14 to zero with 7.30 remaining here in the first quarter play. And it's kind of the same type of script that we saw a week ago when Murphy Correct. took on Sarah Land. Correct. Them falling behind early, and that's something that they need to do is control the clock offensively. They need a great offensive possession coming up here. Jalen Etney takes the kick return. Gets it up to about the 20. We're going to check in with Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. What's going on, Kim? Hey, guys. I was able to talk with the coaches before the game, and one thing that Coach McKenzie said when he said in order to win this game, he said we need no turnovers. Unfortunately, that is already something that we are seeing early in this game. So far, Theodore has been able to control, control the tempo of the game, and they've been making forward progress. And it just seems like that Murphy may have a little bit of game jitters since this is only their second game while Theodore is coming in with their third. Thank you, Kim. We do appreciate that. Look like we have a change at quarterback. No, Winston he's under Salter. center. He's under center. Oh, it pro out. There he is. He's under center. We rarely see that. Murphy coming out in a wishbone formation, Corey, for a second. I thought Winston Salter was the quarterback because uh, Barnett was tucked so low behind the center. I had to do a double take and what brought me to the attention were his shoes. But, you know, when you start talking about John McKenzie getting this job in July, where everyone else was able to get in a full spring training and get to know his personnel, Coach McKenzie comes over from Viger, but he does an outstanding job rallying the troops and getting a great turnout here for football at Murphy High School. It is Murphy's home opener here at Ladd Stadium and a good, decent turnout for a Thursday night. We're the only game in town, Corey, so we want you to enjoy. Trip receivers to the top, Wheeler just to the left. Barnett's going to keep it, tosses it out to Edney. I think they'll credit him with about one on that one. I'm sorry, that, that'll be enough. Is that enough? Yes, that is sir. the first down. That is enough. But seeing that's where what the chain you is. See, Al. You want to see the confidence TK Barnett in his wide receiver, Jalen Edney, who is his leading wide receiver. And if that's your go to, that's what you have to do for Murphy to control the clock, to go ahead and get that confidence and get that first first down of the game. It settles your offense down. And now what you want to do is make sure that you execute your offense and don't put yourself behind down and distance wise. Three receivers to the bottom here, two at the top. No one back with Barnett. Coach McKenzie said he's a dynamic athlete. He's, just, he's their playmaker. They're going to go everything through him, and he goes deep. And it drops out of the hand of Jalen Edney. He had it but could not secure the pigskin. 
incomplete. Incomplete pass. Well, I will say this. There's no one any happier in Ladd Stadium than number 22 in white, Jamarian Jose Williams, who was beat on the play, and that's one that you would love to have back if you're the Murphy Panthers. Those are difference makers. When you pop in the film tomorrow morning and start reviewing the opportunities that you had, that was a great call, and we're going to have our first heat timeout of the quarter. Yep, we're going to take a break, come back. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Thank you. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. This is a program for any middle school student who's actually behind. This opportunity offer kids a chance to do two grades in one year. If it wasn't for Star Academy, I would still be in eighth grade and probably still struggling. We are one-on-one. -on -one. We have small classrooms and we're able to give students that personal touch, that personal attention. I know I'm coming to see good teachers, good attitude, and also they're here to teach us what we need to learn. We're back from our first heat timeout of the ball game. Theodore on top 14 to nothing. It looks like John McKenzie and the crew that are going back to this wishbone formation here, Corey. A lot of success because it gives TK Barnett a lot of versatility and you really don't plan for that. Theodore has a lot in the box. Let's see if they bring him or whether they back out. Second and 10 after that incompletion. Maybe they were trying to draw him off, and one of the big fellas for Theodore tapping himself on the head. That could be the case. Jordan Bolden may have jumped across, and I believe he did. Well, when you're six foot, 290 pounds, to the snap. it's tough. Encroachment on the defense. Five yards. Replay first down. All right, so that's that's an easy five right there for the Panthers. Our officiating crew tonight, Rick Johnson is going to be leading with the white hat, backed up by Devon Davis, Bradley Simpson, Otis Mays, Cody Miller, Anthony Rabb, and Ron Robinson. And we have another stoppage. I don't Great see. Oh, there's a flag on the far side. I hope Murphy is not going to eat five and bring it back after picking up five right there. False start on the offense. Five yards, replay first down. All right, Corey, I guess we'll get a do-over. I thought we were actually at second down. The first play was incomplete. And the down marker still says second down. So we'll call it second and 10. I'm with the crew on the field there. Lad's still calling it second and 10 as well. Well, it's a situation to where now when you are the Murphy Panthers, you've dropped one golden opportunity you just go ahead and put that behind you and you continue to play hard and try to get that back and take advantage of this Theodore defense. Again, this Theodore defense absolutely is loaded to bear with their 3-4 look that they give you, but you have to make sure you put a hat on a hat because defensively, I'll tell you one thing, Randy Larson's defense love to come after you and come at you a lot and hard and quick because you mentioned how many upperclassmen are on that roster defensively. It makes a difference. Had a stoppage officials discussing some things. No play, I mean, no flags on the field right now. So I believe Rick Johnson's going to signal us to play here at 554. So we're back to second and 10 after an offsides and then a false start against Murphy. Wheeler's first carry, and boy, he has met at the line of scrimmage. Bam! for no gain. That's just a textbook tackle. When you start talking about meeting someone in the hole and mm. plugging the gap, I don't know if we're able to take a look at that replay, but that is absolutely textbook, folks, how you're able to tackle defensively. Take three steps and you're absolutely planted exactly where you are. And it looks like the linebacker on that play might have been either Devon Sullivan or Cameron Pruitt. It's one of the two, to right. With the numbers so scrunched up with their jerseys, one, but nonetheless. One wears six and one wears eight, so. A great stick. Third and 10, no gain on that play. 
Barnett's going to roll, fumbles it, picks it back up, and the Bobcats are all over him. He may have gained one yard, but Murphy is going to be far short. It'll be fourth and nine coming up, and we're going to take a look at Ira Cozy once again to punt. Great pursuit by the Bobcats, and that's exactly what you have to have in this situation where you do put the Murphy Panthers at a deficit down and distance-wise, and you'll notice on the punt return, special teams, Theodore puts two back, Al, and if you're able to get the blocking of the speed that's at the punt return position for the Theodore Bobcats, we'll see something special on this punt return. Trey Glover and Tavar Sullivan back. Ira Cozy gets the punt off. Glover has it. Approaching the 50 yard line, trying to weave his way. Still not brought down until right there at about the 47. So once again, Theodore opens up with field position in Panther territory, similar to their first series in the first quarter here. 3.55 remaining here in the first quarter of action in Theodore has quickly scored 14 points, seven off special teams, seven off of their first offensive drive. And we'll see exactly what they're able to put together as in the first drive, Braden Jenkins, along with Cameron Rigby, were able to go ahead and orchestrate a wonderful opening drive for the Theodore Bobcats. Murphy, I believe, can and will bow up on defense and come away with something positive. Techn technically the second series here for the Bobcats. Play action, Rigby keeps it. Picking up a couple yards, trying to weave his way through. I believe they're going to credit him with about an eight-yard run up to the 37 of Murphy. Second down and short coming up for the Bobcats. Great job of Rigby not doing too much, not throwing the interception and just taking what the defense gave him in that rushing situation. Second down and we'll call it one yard to go for Theodore. I like how Rigby just took his time, Corey, and kind of plotted his way through. With a big nine yard game, he rolls out to the right side, going deep. Trying for Glover, incomplete. Third and short coming up here for the Bobcats. Nothing wrong with a play like that. Nice little, we're going to call it a kill shot. Just go for it. You, you only need one yard to get the first down. In coverage is the quarterback who also plays cornerback. Sure does. Is TK Barnett. That just goes to show the type of athlete that this young man is for John McKizzy and the Murphy Panthers. And now with a third down and one yard to go. It's Eric Collier, big boy football, run downhill. Direct snap as the Bobcats play out of a Wildcat formation. And we have a flag on the play, Braden Jenkins with that direct snap. Let's see what the call is gonna be. Bobcats keep it on the ground. There's a flag on no the surprise play. with that play call at all. So it's a hold against Theodore that will push them back. So a third and short is not going to be a third and long. Ten yards, spotted the foul. Replay third down. So that's a spot foul. He's going to place that ball at the 45-yard line. The line to gain is going to be the 36 of Murphy. Rigby back. Back in the ball game now as Trey Glover comes into motion here to the near side. This is a money down for the Murphy Panthers. They have to get off the field defensively and find a way to get us come away with a stop. And here it is. They are encroaching oh, on God. defense, and that's just five free ones for Fire the snap. Theodore Bobcats. Coachman, defense, five yards, replay third. Looks like Demetrius Davis leaned a little too far in his momentum could not be stopped, so that gives Theodore five free. So now at the 40, only needing four yards to pick up the first down. We'll check that a five, looking like they'll need maybe five yards. Rick Johnson and his crew still discussing things, Core. They're gonna call it officially third and four yards to go. That's what I thought originally, but where they placed it at, it was about five yards. Now they've kind of moved forward a bit. 
And now we're marked ready to play here. Well, so I'm cool with that third and four. That's what Laz calling it. It's a different play call sheet for your offensive coordinator, Kendall Gibson, between third nine and third four. Tight end goes into motion for Theodore. They hand off. And they give it to their money guy, Braden Jenkins. And he's going to get the first down, and the chains are going to move for the Bobcats. And that's what the Theodore Bobcats can do to you, whether they run a Bobcat formation with Jenkins getting the direct snap, or they have Rigby in the shotgun situation. We mentioned Eric Collier loves to run the football behind the big beef of the offensive line, and we'll give shout outs to that offensive line here in just a moment. Oh, they're a big bunch. First to 10 for Theodore. Rigby's pass. That is an interception picked off by the Panthers. The first turnover for Theodore this season. Intercepted by T.K. Barnett, the quarterback who also plays defense. He's an impact player for a reason, folks. And you look at him being able to ball hawk and track that football. And what he does is he comes over to the sidelines Gets the play call, and we'll see if he runs right back out at the quarterback situation. And that's sometimes tough for a young man to do. You make the interception, you go over and say, hey, coach, I, I did my job defensively. Now give me the rock, and let me see what I can do with the pink skin offensively for the Murphy Panthers. So they definitely got the stop there with the interception. Murphy back on the field once again. Kentrell. Wheeler with the carry. He goes backwards. Let's see if his forward progress is going to give him one. But there is some laundry on the far side of the field near the 20 yard line. One thing about this artificial turf is the laundry won't get dirty because of the artificial turf. Whereas the last couple of weeks on that grass, wherever you throw that flag, it's definitely going to change colors on you. Take it down and get the call here from Rick Johnson. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, we play one. That does not bode well for Murphy. Pushes them back, shot right there of John McKenzie. Got to shout out some of the folks he has watching the game. His mom, Aretha McKenzie, up in South Carolina. His wife, Venus, and daughter, Jasmine McKenzie, always supporting Coach McKenzie and his efforts. And we have a few more to shout out for his family tonight. Don't want the McKenzie family to think that we forgot about a lot of them. No, Coach sir. McKenzie always has his family supporting them, and we love to see the family support here at Murphy. Second and 22 for the Panthers coming up. Barnett throws it. This kind of puts it up there. And that ball is hauled in, complete. A great pass and a great catch by Ben Jackson as he brought that pigskin down. Benjamin Jackson, the six foot one, 165 pound sophomore with the reception. And that's the type of play. You look at the ball capabilities. He traced the football perfectly and was able, not necessarily to high point it, but his timing was precise, and that's exactly the injection of offensive energy that this Panthers offense wanted to display here against the Theodore Bobcats. And notice, Corey, Barnett threw that off his back foot. He didn't step into it at all. Absolutely correct. Under center, they hand it off to Kentrell Wheeler. He shakes off a couple Bobcats for a three to four yard pickup. And the Murphy Panther faithful are getting excited as we are under one minute here in the first quarter. And I think when you start looking, Murphy does not have to run another play this quarter. And I would be shocked if they did run another one before the quarter goes ahead and hits triple zero because that's one of the things they wanted to do was control the time of possession. Make the clock their ally. It's about a four second difference between the game clock and the play clock. There is no need to actually snap the ball. Let's see what Barnett does if he recognizes that. And Rick Johnson's gonna blow the whistle and that's gonna do it for us here in the first quarter. Theodore started early and scored early up 14 points, but right now, Murphy has the momentum. Let's see if it'll continue as we start the second quarter of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. 
Our children with special needs deserve a place to play. That is why we are coming together to build the Miracle League of Westmobile Schmidt Family Park. It will include a special needs ball field and playground, regulation baseball and softball fields, and more. We have raised more than $1 million and construction will start soon, but we need your help to complete the project. Visit mcpss.com slash Miracle League to donate and to learn more. Any dollar amount will help bring a smile to a child's face. Together, we can make a miracle. with Murphy's principal, uh, Mr. Ed Sanderson, correct? There we go. How are you doing this I'm evening? Excellent. I can't complain. Well, we are so excited that this is your first year at Murphy High School. So can you tell us a little bit about the vision that you have for Murphy? It's extremely simple. The vision is, is to make sure that we capitalize on each one of our scholars as we prepare them to be college and career ready, but really prepare them to realize that it is more than life after high school. So we can be able to tap into that academically, athletically, even emotionally and socially. Mm -hmm. That's the vision that I have for Murphy High School. Yes. Are there any changes that you've already tried to make to help accomplish that vision and goal that you have? Well, you know, Murphy High School has such a rich history. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of those things now to where you figure out what's actually needed. So we have been in a process of working not only with our alumni, but also with students as well as teachers, just to see what they're passionate about. And then from there, if there's changes that need to be made, we have made those. But at the same time, we want them to understand that they're in a safe and secure school at Murphy High School, and we strive for that each and every day. We were talking about the rich history of Murphy, not just athletically, but also academically. Can you tell us some of the programs and academics that your school has to offer? Oh, well, you know, let's, let's, let's start off with this here. You know, the next, and this is, Murphy High School is about 96 years old. So with the kids that have just came in, the freshmen, they're going to have something to be excited about because when they graduate, they will have represented a hundred years, which Murphy is the oldest high school in the state of Alabama. So when we think about the UA early college, we also think about the IB program that we currently have, but also the dual enrollment and the and the, the opportunities that our kids for dual enrollment to take place at Bishop State as well as Coastal. So what we tried to do is, is really try to cultivate an environment to where every kid, no matter who comes to Murphy High School, is able to excel if they put their mind to it. And I know that you have been in this community, you said, for over 13 years. Well, actually, I was at on the Parkway for about 13 years. So uh, coming from Pillins to BC Rain High School and then now getting the opportunity to come to Murphy High School, uh, the passion is the love for kids and being able to take each one that I possibly can, elevate them to where they need to be, and hopefully I can prepare them and say something that makes sense to them yeah. to move them to where they want to be in life, because it's all about them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We look forward to continually seeing Murphy succeed in all of their endeavors. Well, listen, I thank you for the opportunity, and I hope that you will continue to showcase Murphy High School because of we course. are the Mighty Panthers. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Kim. We do appreciate that. Third and seven coming up here for the Panthers. After that big play toward the end of the first quarter, they're trying to keep this drive going. Barnett rolling out to his right. Completes the pass. It's not going to be enough as David Green hauls it in. Got a chance. Let's take a look at the first half statistics if we can get those up. Core, you can see right there, passing, of course, no surprise, but no surprise with the rushing from the Theodore Bobcats. When you start talking about that long throw that T.K. Barnett had, that increased their offensive output, and you really look at the block punt. It's not necessarily a turnover because it was on fourth down. It was down. fourth down, right. So you look at the penalty situation. I know Murphy wants to clean that up, but Theodore is going to continue to run the football. But here it is, fourth down and two yards to go. Murphy's going to go. But technically, Theodore does have one interception in the first quarter. Wheeler in the line trying to push him forward. I think he's going to be just short 
I think you're right, Al. Oh, the first down mark. Looking up here from the press box area with our binoculars at Lad People Stadium, it looks like he's going to be short by the nose of the football, and it will be a turnover on down. So you go from fourth down and two yards to go right. in Theodore Bobcat territory to where now you give the Bobcats an opportunity to kind of redeem themselves from that last turnover and interception that was thrown. Ball over on downs. Theodore is going to take over on their own 33-yard line. And you talked about it earlier. Coach John McKenzie wants to make the clock his ally. He wants to run the ball, and he has the, the player to do it with Barnett. Nice spin move right there by Braden Jenkins, and the pile goes forward for about oh, one or two yards here. Coming up second and long for the Bobcats. Matthew Stallworth, the 6'2", 269-pound junior in the backfield, wrapping up and finishing off that tackle for defensive coordinator Michael Perry. And now you're looking at, even though it was a two-yard positive gain, second down and eight yards to go for Theodore. Ball sitting squarely on the 40-yard line. They fake it and they throw it a little too high for Tavares Sullivan for him to bring it in. So it's going to bring up third and eight here for the Bobcats. Theodore and Murphy have met 57 times. Murphy leads the series 33 to 24. And Theodore beat Murphy last year 27 to 6 when they were in Class 7A Region 1. Now these teams are in Class 6A Region 1. Money down for the Murphy Panthers, and you look at Murphy not being able to convert on fourth and two. Now Theodore with an opportunity here at third and eight to try to pick up a long down and distance situation, and looks like there's going to be a timeout called on the field by Theodore. I believe so. They wanted to use some of that play clock and then just kind of drain it and call a timeout. So both teams have used the timeout. Actually, Murphy has used two so far got to thanks our folks got to thank the folks over there at firehouse subs where for a limited time get your italian favorites for 6.99 choose from the medium firehouse meatball or italian but it's for a limited time only so visit our friends jim and susie sherman at the greenlight road location firehouse subs enjoy more subs save more lives also thanks to bsn sports where you can get team apparel and equipment from baseball to wrestling and all sports in between BSN Sports, the heart of the game, online at bsnsports.com. It's Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, covering the sidelines for us tonight. Kimberly Dunn on our first Thursday night edition of high school football. I believe we may have some more Thursday games later on in the year, Corey, but uh, it's good to be out tonight. Weather's cooperating, feels great, and we're we're back up top at lad in the press box. Well, I'll tell you one thing's for certain, Al. We're back to summertime temperatures here along the Gulf Coast with the two-week rain deluge that we had. I know these players and coaches were happy to get back on the practice field with some sunshine this week. Rigby rolls out to his right. Tried to get to Sullivan once again and short hops it. So it'll be fourth down coming up here for the Bobcats. Let's see if Coach Collier's going to punt it. And it appears as if they are bringing out the special teams unit. Being able to flip the field with the specialist that you do have from Miguel Frias. We know that he has the ability to get that kick end over end. And if you're the Murphy Panthers, you go ahead and you have two returners as well, two speedsters, TK Barnett and Jalen Edney. I wouldn't kick the football <laughs> to TK Barnett, that's for certain. Low snap to Frias as he tries to fall on it. The Bobcat player picks it up. I believe that's Cameron Pruitt, number eight. In a situation like that, you want to get down quick because you never know, it could be punched out. You look at this snap and Frias does his best to try to scoop it up, but on this artificial turf, it takes a very, very different type of bounce. And Murphy returns the special team's favor. Sure does. As now the difference is the Bobcats were able to put six points on the board off of the special team's miscue that Murphy had. And now Murphy is going to be in prime real estate here deep in red zone territory. They're going to officially mark it 
at the 11-yard line of the Bobcats. Panthers can pick up a first down without scoring. So they're starting off in the red zone, the deepest they have been in Theodore territory. Thanks to that special teams miscue, Ken Trail Wheeler up the middle. He plows ahead for about five. Nice carry by Wheeler. Second down and four coming up here for the Panthers. Jordan Bolden, the nose guard, 290-pound senior, was able to go ahead and save that touchdown run was able to trip him up right as he crossed the line of scrimmage. And five down, five yards is all that's needed to get a fresh set of downs inside this red zone area. Ball on the six yard line. Trips it to the bottom. Lining up in a bunch formation. They hand it off, snap it to Barnett. He tosses it to Edney, and Edney floats on in for the six-yard score, and the Panthers are on the board. I love the fact that you roll your playmaker to the strong side of the field with Jalen Edney, and because of it, you're able to run a nice route. You go ahead and you roll him out to where he has the option to run or to pass. He goes ahead and gets rid of it to Edney. Jalen Edney. The 5'9", 161-pound junior scores his first touchdown of the night, and T.K. Barnett throws his first touchdown of the night. Enoch Iracozzi on for the extra point. The kick is up, and it's good. Murphy cuts the lead to seven. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hello, I'm Katrina Frazier. And I'm Deborah Robinson, and we would like to be your next Realtors. As homeowners, we know how confusing it can be searching to find that perfect home that fits your needs and budget. For that reason, it's important to have a reliable partner to represent you and to be there for every step of your home buying process. You'll find the services offered through Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Cooper & Company Realtors are second to none. So whether you are buying or selling your home, call us today and let our experience work for you. We welcome you back to Legendary Lab People Stadium. Al Weed and Coralie Bounty on the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn giving you the action. Thursday night high school football. Theodore on top 14 to seven. So Murphy takes advantage of the special team's blunder and gets the quick score. And they are on the board. Well, that's a huge score for the Murphy Panthers and head coach John McKenzie. It gives the crowd a little bit of juice as well, Al. Taken by one of the up guys for the Bobcats. As he's going to be brought down at the 38 yard line. There's a scoring drive right there. 11 yards, two plays. Jalen Etney with that six yard TD reception. Nice play call dialed up by the Panthers. You roll out your playmaker, you let him make the decision, and Jordan Casher handles that kickoff for Theodore. And when you start talking about the field position that they start off with, at their own 39-yard line, had a turnover early, had a special teams blunder. Let's see if they're able to regroup here offensively or if Murphy decides to go ahead and continue to feed off of Uncle Mo that we've seen show up here at Lad People Stadium for Murphy. Hand off to Jenkins, trying to get a block from Trey Glover. And the Panthers collapse on him. I believe he's going to lose about one yard on the carry. It'll take Theodore to second down. Panthers have lost four straight games against Theodore, the longest losing streak for the Panthers in this series, Corey, that they pretty much dominated 33-24 to throughout the years. Santrez Calhoun on the stop. And, Al, we saw penalty flags thrown a week ago at inopportune times for teams that were trying to gain momentum. And here it is now. Hey, legal shift, two minute motion at the same time. On the offense, five yards, replay first down. Theodore being caught at inopportune times with penalties, but 
a momentum is something else because I know that Wetumpka was able to go ahead and score those 24 unanswered points against Baker. Right. Due to momentum shift, it was going to be 28 to 7. Baker, the 99 yard fumble recovery, and all of a sudden you started giving them life with Wetumpka, that is. Momentum is definitely a factor in any game that you play, and we'll see if Theodore is able to kind of stifle this momentum that Murphy has right now. First and 15, Theodore on their own 34-yard line. They go back to Jenkins. Nice run by Jenkins. He picked up about 13 on that carry. It's going to be second and short here for the Bobcats. Nothing different for Theodore and Eric Collier. No matter down the distance, he loves to run the football. He's going to trust the big offensive line of Cameron Rogers, Gianni Smith, Andrew Gay, Marquez Timms, and Unique Stone. Second and two, back to Jenkins they go. And he's just leisurely running it, taking his time. Gets way into the Panthers territory, into the red zone. Corey, he didn't have full speed running that ball right there. It was hard for him to go ahead once he got to the second level to turn it into high gear. He did a good job of reading the holes, and the hole opened up, and he just wasn't able to get that extra burst. But T.K. Barnett catches him from behind and makes a touchdown-saving tackle for Murphy. Theodore playing tempo here. They give it off to the big fella, Cameron Pruitt. Check on that. Damon Sullivan comes over from defense. So we're used to Theodore having a one-two punch core, but this year they've got a one-two plus three punch because you got Braden Jenkins, Tavares Sullivan, also Andrew Palmore is going to get some carries. And no surprise there, Damon Sullivan getting a carry for the Bobcats. Second and seven, ball sits at the 12-yard line. Back to Sullivan they go again. He falls forward for maybe one. So we'll call it, say, third and six coming up here for Theodore. Al, the most important thing is he fell forward. He did. Even though he was tripped up right around the line of scrimmage, didn't lose any yards. Here it is, another critical third down. We've seen lots of third downs for both of these teams sure have. here in the first half of action. But that plays right into the hand of Coach Collier. As we know, he loves to run the ball, and he told us he's going to run the ball. But they have to keep it clean and keep down turnovers. They've had a turnover and picked up a few penalties tonight. And Theodore is going to – I'm sorry, Murphy's going to stop the clock right there and use their last time out. So on this break, let's check in with Kimberly Dunn, see what's going on with her. Hi, I'm here with MCPSS Athletic Director Brad Lowell. How are you doing tonight? Doing well, thank you. Good, good. All right, so tell me how you're feeling about games being played again here at Ladd People's Stadium. Yeah, we're excited to be back here at Ladd. I mean, it's a lot of tradition here, and um, it really helped our schools. We have those stadiums being built, and, and of course, being able to actually utilize Ladd, and, and especially with the weather this year, it's been so bad, you know, being able to play on the turf field and have the opportunity to do that, you know, has been great. And uh, Lad's been really good working with us, and uh, we're just glad to be back. Well, good, and I'm, gl I'm glad you mentioned the stadium's being built. Can you tell us a little bit about the progress that's going on and what we can look forward to seeing? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're up and running uh, as far as just um, being built. But, of course, we knew the timeline was going to kind of differ a little bit due to the weather and due to uh, resources and, and supply lines. And so, but right now, um, you know, I, I, really there's no true timeline. Not sure if any would be ready by the end of the season. Um, but I'm pretty sure that um, we'll be at least getting there, if not this spring, into the fall season, sir. So in our athletics for Mobile County, what are some exciting things that are going on for Mobile County schools? Well, as we mentioned before, just uh, building those five new stadiums, the superintendent um, has really invested in athletics, and we're very thankful for that and the opportunity that he's provided for our student athletes and our schools, uh, provide more equity in our schools. And, um, and along with, you know, we have fall sports kicking off, not just football. Um, we got swimming and cross country and volleyball um, all kicking off. And so um, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of things going on, and we're just excited, you know, to get back and, and start it up. Now with our girls sports, how is the volleyball season going for this season? 
Yeah, um, you know, kind of with volleyball, they're, uh, they're, they do a lot of tournaments early on, and then um, they'll start getting into area play. And, um, you know, volleyball season's pretty quick, and it won't be long. We'll start getting into area tournaments and things like that. But uh, we're looking forward, uh, forward to good volleyball seasons for some of our schools and uh, just like uh, all the other sports. All right, well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us and tell us a little bit about what Mobile County has to offer academically. And we look forward to really seeing those five new stadiums come and help support our schools and help those ac athletics just grow. Absolutely. Um, appreciate you uh, having me out here and um, appreciate what you guys do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate that. Third and six, they give it to Brayden Jenkins. And he's going to push the pile forward, gets up to the five-yard line, so that's enough for a first down. So, Corey, we don't want to alarm the folks. Our athletic director, Brad Lowell, had an extended explanation because Murphy called a timeout, and then Rick Johnson went ahead and used the heat timeout back. So we had back-to-back -back timeouts there. And when you have that situation, the players just have to stay composed, and it gives the coaches an opportunity to go ahead and make sure they know what they want to do, especially now that Theodore is looking at a first and goal to goal situation. Ball on the four yard line. Looks like Damon Sullivan's gonna be in the backfield. And we're going with a direct snap possibly here. Timeout Murphy. Theodore. Theodore takes a timeout. Murphy's actually out of timeout score. So that, that last timeout from John McKenzie was his last one. So let's take a look at 5A Region 1 standings while we have a break right here. That is the Alabama Sports Writers Poll. I thought we were getting region standings. There we go. So Gulf Shores right now 1-0, Williamson Faith Academy and Rain. And also you have UMS Wright, Viger, Citronelle, Alberta, and LaFleur. Take it up to 6A Region 1. That's the region we're in tonight. These teams opened region play last week, Corey, because it's a nine-team region. Sailorland, Theodore, Spanish Fort, St. Paul's, all victorious right there. And you have the bottom five trying to pick up first wins with Murphy, Baldwin County, Robertsdale, and Blunt, McGill, Tulin in region play. And some of those are even 0-2. We have time. We'll get up 7A Region 1. Seven-team region here. Some teams will be starting region play in this particular group. I know uh, Baker and Davidson playing tomorrow night as well. So as you see right there, Fairhope on top 2-0. and And Bryant 1-0 and overall with that victory over Hopeville. So there's your region standings here in the area. Direct snap to Jenkins, and he is going to run it on in. A four-yard score for Braden Jenkins. And Theodore extends their lead. Credit the offensive line on the right side of that line, and you're talking about a hole that opened up by Thames and Stone, and that was just a great offensive series by the Theodore Bobcats. Topped off with that touchdown run, and the point after is pending here for Theodore. Here's a kick from Miguel Frias, and it is off the upright, no good. 20 to seven is our score. Theodore is on top for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future, and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. It was just like an extension of home. This should give you that outlet to give you a career. A successful career. We're doing some great things at Bishop State. Keep an eye on us.
For executive director Quentin Howard, director Wade Ford, engineer Fran Conway, I'm Al Whedon, joined by Coralie Bounty. On the sidelines is Kimberly Dunn. Statisticians China Powell and Matt Moore atop the press box of Lad People Stadium here. Theater was on top 20 to 7 as the Panthers bring it up to about the 29 yard line. Number 13, Brian Jackson. Brian Jackson, Ben return. Jackson with the return. Take a look at that scoring drive by Theodore. That's actually Murphy's scoring drive. So we saw that one previously, but we know that the Bobcats did punch it in for four yards. It was Brayton Jenkins. I tell you this, Murphy would love to have a scoring drive right here as we have 522 remaining here in the second quarter and 20 to seven, our score with the missed extra point. And we'll see if Murphy is able to go ahead and put a long scoring drive and control the clock here to end the second quarter. Hand off to Kentrell Wheeler. And boy, he has a nice run and some assistance from his offensive line, giving a little extra push there, Core. Big 71, Jalen Drakeford, 6'4", <laughs> 309-pound senior, the left tackle, giving a little bit of extra push, but positive yardage, controlling the clock, and the line of scrimmage on first down brings up second down and one. Controlling that clock, important for the Panthers. Back to Wheeler once again. He gets the first down. Bounces off one of his linemen, and he's still running into Bobcats territory, into the red zone. Great run by Kentrell Wheeler. Outstanding run. Great job of holding their blocks for the Panthers. Braylon Robinson from his free safety position, the 5'11", 175-pound junior, winds up making the stop. But you look at the patience, and you look at the footwork of this particular run, and when you see him get past the line of scrimmage, great cut back right there, start and stop, and then he cuts back again and able to gain it's yards after contact. First down and 10 yards to go from the 17-yard line of the Bobcats. We told you earlier that offensive line averages 301 pounds. They are big. Barnett's going to keep it, reverse his field, and the Bobcats around him. He's going to take a loss of about two yards. Four, He's second down and about 12 coming up here for the Panthers. DeMond Sullivan from his inside linebacker Man, position stays four, home four, because four. when you have an electric and explosive ten. player like T.K. Barnett, just a tremendous athlete who can change direction, and if you don't stay home, then there's going to be problems, and Theodore did a good job there bringing up a loss of one, second down and 11 yards to go. For Murphy. We're within four minutes. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we're going to show you the bands. Also, we'll give you the Chick fil A halftime trivia challenge as well. So stick around at halftime. And Big Drakeford could not stop his momentum as he jumps across the line. Let's start. On the offense, five yards. We play second down. That'll cost the Panthers five, Corey. 309 pounds of beef going a little bit early there and <laughs> you're not going to be able to stop that type of momentum now when that young man makes contact with one of the defensive players you're definitely going to see the type of momentum and the strength that Jalen Drakeford has but that does take away any positive first yard drives or first yardage situations for Murphy second and 16 is not ideal for the offensive coordinator Cedric Smith Wheeler to the left of Barnett. T.K. Barnett keeps it. He goes nowhere. And this drive is starting to stall. Third down coming up here for the Panthers. And his helmet comes off, so yep, Barnett check out. will have to check out on the play and that tackle made by Gabrielle Watson for the Theodore Bobcats. Now, a tremendous difference between when you start talking about first and 10 and first and 15 from a play calling standpoint and especially being able to control the clock the way that head coach John McKenzie would like to do. Play clock under 10 seconds. James Holbrook comes in, backup quarterback. He did see some action last week against Sierra Land. He's going to keep it, try to run up the middle. And he is... 
He is brought down. So that's going to be a loss, but this drive is stalling here, Corey. It's fourth down and 20 yards to go. Murphy was on the 17-yard mm -hmm. line of Theodore inside the red zone after that big run by Wheeler. You had that huge explosive play, and now when you start taking one penalty, they can make a huge difference. There will be a timeout called here by Murphy, which will officially be well, their that, last that's timeout. That's Theodore out. taking the timeout. They're trying to stop the clock, Corey. Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge coming up at halftime. Don't forget, Kimberly Dunn's going to try to get another winner. She goes into the stands and grabs a spectator and asks them a question. So that'll be coming up at halftime, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia Where challenge, along with bands as well. Al, here it is, fourth down and 20 yards to go. If you're Murphy, you don't want to take an opportunity to try a field goal because you've already given up one block special teams play that led in six points for the Bobcats. So here at fourth and 20, your best option is definitely the TK Barnett looking for Jalen Edney or Benjamin Jackson, who have come away with huge receptions here early in the first half. Well, Corey, I saw you signaling to me that Murphy called it. I thought they were out of timeouts, but Theodore had one and now they have zero. So I can't trust Ladd anymore, Murphy. I mean, uh, Corey, I, I can't trust him. I just know it's fourth down. It's fourth and 20 coming up here. Barnett has time, throws it into double coverage, incomplete, as he tried to get it out to Ben Jackson. So it'll be ball over on downs, one minute and 55 seconds left until the end of the second quarter. Well, there are situations that coaches work on at least once a week in practice, and the two-minute drill is definitely taken out of your six- or five-day practice period for head coach Eric Collier and the Bobcats. And we'll see how they're able to execute their two-minute offense here with 155 remaining here in the second quarter of play. And like you said, timeouts on the board. Both teams, according to Lad People Stadium's board, have no timeouts remaining. So what you're able to do here with the ball on your own 25-yard line, we'll see how they're able to manage the clock. Theodore 75 yards away from trying to punch it in the end zone. Punching it up the middle, Cameron Rigby stretches it out to get that extra yard. Clock still running. Theodore cannot stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. Second and about four coming up here for the Bobcats. A first down will stop the clock temporarily. Pass is complete. And the receiver gets out of bounds at the same time. So it's a first down and they stop the clock. Greg Watson with the reception from Rigby. Well, that's exactly what you want to do is to get the football out of bounds. And you're able to do that and reset the play clock for a fresh 30 and also stop the game clock. So here it is, first down and 10 yards to go from your own 39-yard line. Empty set for Rigby. Trip receivers at the bottom. Quick pass to Braden Jenkins as he nears the midfield stripe. He, he will, should have enough from my vantage point, and the chains are going to move. That stops the clock momentarily. Theodore running tempo, as you called it, Corey, in their two-minute drill. This drive started with one minute and 55 seconds on the clock. Rigby goes across the middle. T.K. Barnett almost had his second interception of the ball game there. And that's something that you want to stay away from. The good thing is it does stop the clock with 105, but so far with Murphy already coming away with one interception, you don't want to turn the football right back over to the Panthers. So you want to go through all your reads, and in worst-case scenario, you throw the football away. Second and 10. Ball sitting squarely on the 50-yard line. 65 seconds remain here in the first half. Pressure on Rigby. He unloads it. Completes that pass to Tavares Sullivan, and he hustles out of bounds before he picked up the first down. He was able to get it, so the sticks are moving. Well, one thing that you have to look at from a wide receiver standpoint, you have Tavares Sullivan, 
Cameron Johnson, the six foot five, 200 pound senior, number 12. We haven't called his name tonight. This is a young man who is committed to play football for the Commodores of Vanderbilt. And you can see he's definitely a presence on the football field when he does line up. He is in close to the bottom of your screen right now as that trips formation. They go to the opposite side to the top. Incomplete. It looked like a hitch and go because Sullivan had kept going toward the end zone, Core. Third, 10 yards to go here for Theodore with the clock stopped right at 50 seconds. And again, the Bobcats with the 14 point first quarter scoring barrage was able to jump on Murphy earlier. But if Murphy you need momentum here with this defensive stop. You can't allow the Bobcats to tack on any more points before halftime. Third and 10, ball on the 39, no timeouts for Theodore. Play action, Rigby goes deep to Sullivan, bounces out of his hands. If he could have held on to it, that would have been an easy six for Theodore. We've seen a lot of footballs that have been thrown on the money tonight by the quarterback that the wide receivers for both teams just have not been able to haul in. And that's something, again, when you pop in the film, you know as a wide receiver, you want to look that football all the way in. Right. And they just have not been able to do that tonight for the Bobcats and the Panthers both having drops. But fourth and 10, Theodore's going with 42 seconds remaining. Rigby's pass too high for Trey Glover. It's ball over on downs. And Murphy's going to take possession here at the 39-yard line. No timeouts with 30 second, second, 37 seconds remaining in the first half. Huge stop by the Murphy Panthers defense as, again, they're trailing 20-7. to seven, And that's huge. Correction, this is going to be fourth down right here coming I up. I thought that was fourth I down. I did too. The down marker had fourth down. It still has four, fourth down as well. That's right, Al. I, I miscalculated three straight incompletions by Theodore. This will make the fourth if he's not able to complete it. Thanks to our statistician, Matt Moore. Goes once again to Tavara Sullivan. Incomplete. Incomplete. So now we officially have fourth down. I thought it was fourth. Lad called it fourth. I'm not trusting Lad anymore. I'm, I'm, gonna go I'm sticking ahead with Matt Moore and China Power. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to stick with what's in our booth right here with us. And three incomplete passes leads to that fourth down. And that was four straight incomplete passes for the Theodore Bobcats. But when you're in this type of field position with no timeouts remaining, that's exactly what will happen to you. But again, still a huge stop for the Murphy Panthers as you go back and you look at that replay. The ball was placed where the wide receiver again had an opportunity to come away with it, but TK Barnett in coverage for the Murphy Panthers. Two nice passes from Rigby right there. Murphy simply hands it off to Kentrell Wheeler. And he's gonna go past the 50 yard line, gets the first down. But Murphy cannot stop the clock. It'll stop temporarily to reset the chains. So John McKenzie and the crew, they need to be ready with a play to call here as Rick Johnson motions ready to play. The chains just getting set up. First to 10 on the 46. Kind of looking like a Hail Mary situation right here for Barnett, eight seconds remaining. The receivers go down. Barnett hauls it off and he has completed it. That's a 46-yard touchdown. And that's huge momentum swing for the Panthers as we're able to look at the replay. Jacob Cook brings it in, Corey. I don't know if that was pass interference or not in that situation, but he came away with that one. And you look at the type of arm strength. We talked about Barnett that earlier. He threw one off his back have. foot. Sure did. He put that one on the money. Panthers lining up for the extra point. 
Enoch Iracozzi on to kick it. High snap. And his kick is no good, and we are at zeros. Take a look at that replay right quick. Roll into his Barnett right. had a lot of time, Corey. I don't know if the wide receiver pushed off. We're going to get a great shot right here to see if the wide receiver, not really a push in the back, really. just a missed time jump by your defensive back, Braylon Robinson. Braylon Robinson missed time the jump. But bringing it in, Jacob Cook, and just like that, it is 20 to 13, a very interesting and exciting first half that we've had here with our return to Lab People Stadium, Corey. This is how you welcome back home. Well, when you start talking about momentum, Theodore gets up early. Sure did. 14 to 0. Murphy shows no quit, and that goes to the conditioning that Coach John McKenzie says it's a four-quarter ball game. He wants his team to find a way to get things done in the fourth quarter, but that's a great ending to the first half. Let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn. Coach Collier, y'all were able to start this football game out and really control, control the tempo. You were able to capitalize on a major turnover. How do you feel like that is going to win? So what are some things that you Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties with the audio right there. So we'll get Kim to recap it with Coach Collier as he goes into the locker room. Only up 20 to 13 now, Corey. I can guarantee he's going to make the adjustments that he needs to make at halftime. He's going to let his team know, guys, we're in for a four-quarter dogfight, yep. and you have to play and sustain the intensity. But momentum, Murphy here to end the half. All right, coming up, it's halftime with the bands and the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Don't move. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. It's Thursday night football here at Ladd Stadium. Theater on top, 20 to 13. Right now, let's take it down to the sidelines and listen to the Bobcat marching band.
sounds of the Theodora Bobcats marching band. We'll be back with the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge and a look at the Murphy Band as well. You're watching MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. You've got questions, we got answers. MCPSS.com. Whether it's attendance zones, school calendar, lunch menus, or registration information that you are looking for, you can find it right here. MCPSS.com. You can also get the latest news and district-wide calendar information, and it's just a click away. So when you need to know, and you need to know right now, check us out. MCPSS.com. We welcome you back to Lab People Stadium. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's the Thursday night edition, but you know what? We're still doing the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge, so let's take it down to Kimberly Dunn. We are here with our ch time trivia. Yeah, I think I'm ready to answer. Uh, Difficulties with Kimberly there. Let's take a look at our quarterback comparison if we're able to get that up. So far tonight, Cameron Rigby, 5 for 15 for 45 yards. But the action right there, no surprise, Corey. T.K. Barnett, 6 for 10 for 112 yards, two touchdowns. Now, he hasn't thrown an interception. He has an interception. Actually, Rigby has thrown an interception tonight. What a weapon to have for Coach McKenzie right. offensively. So Rigby does have one interception, and Barnett has recovered an interception for the Murphy Panthers, our quarterback comparison. We'll check in with this later on during the broadcast here. Halftime at Lad People Stadium in the Murphy Panthers coming on to the field to give their performance here. We'll try to possibly get Kimberly Dunn back on. Sorry about those technical difficulties, but right now let's take a listen to the Murphy High School Marching Band.
Philippine Guard Director is Barclay Irvin. Our percussion instructor is John Rocker. Our band captain is Sounds of the mighty Murphy Marching Panthers. Right now, we're going to give it another shot again, take it back down to the field with Kimberly Dunn. We're going to try the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge once more. That's right. We're here with our Chick-fil-A Trivia Challenge. Hopefully, we won't have any issues this time because this young man is eager and excited to win our Mobile County and Chick-fil-A prize pack. Are you ready to do this? Yes, I'm ready to do this. Okay. Can you tell us your name and what school you go to, what grade you're in? My name is Daniel Lee. I'm in the 8th grade, and, and I also play the drums. You play the drums, so hopefully you're going to get out here with these bands one day? I hope so. Well, we cannot wait to listen to you do that. You seem super excited. Are you ready to answer our question? I think I am. Okay, here's our question of the week. The mainland of the United States is bordered by the Pacific Ocean in the west, Canada to the north, Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico to the south, but what borders the east of the United States? Is it A, the Red Sea, B, the Atlantic Ocean, C, the Indian Ocean, or D, Mobile Bay? What do you think our answer is? The Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. There you go, bud. Congratulations. You're the proud winner of our prize pack. I hope you like Chick-fil-A, and maybe you'll find someone special to share that with. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Say bye. bye. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. We're going to take a quick break and then come back with the Alabama Sports Writers Association Top 10 Polls here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. We welcome you back to Legendary Lab People Stadium. Halftime here. Theodore is on top, 20 to 13. Right now, let's take a look at the Alabama Sports Writers Association top 10 polls for the week here in 5A. UMS Wright is the unanimous pick this week atop the 5A poll. Vigers lost to BC Rain a week ago, drops the Wolves to eight. Gulf Shores jumps three spots to four. The Dolphins' highest ever ranking. Outside looking in, Faith Academy picks up eight votes. And BC Rain picks up three. Corey, you were here for that ball game a week ago. At last day? Yeah, tremendous environment, and the Causeway definitely had reason to celebrate as BC Rain really took over the fourth quarter of play and really woke the state up yeah. in regards to saying, is BC Rain for real? We'll see one week from now as they have a bye this week. All right, let's take it up to the 6A poll. Clay Chalkville is still number one with the two, three, and four teams, the same from last week. We'll wait for that poll to come up here. And while we're waiting on that, congratulations to our Chick-fil-A winner. I don't think I've seen a more excited Chick-fil-A winner in our entire broadcasting <laughs> history, Al. And I'm just glad that he got it right. He was able to get that Mobile County Public School swag bag and the Chick-fil-A package that was inside of it. But what exciting. I think he was more excited to be talking to Kimberly Dunn, and then he got the question right than anything. Yeah, I think he was excited to be on TV. I'm, I ain't mad at him, Corey. No, <laughs> sir, you can't be. That's definitely going to be the highlight of the evening, even though we had a nice – Hail Mary right before the half. And we'll take a break and come back. Sorry about the technical difficulties. It's halftime here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hello, 
I'm Katrina Frazier. And I'm Deborah Robinson. And we would like to be your next Realtors. As homeowners, we know how confusing it can be searching to find that perfect home that fits your needs and budget. For that reason, it's important to have a reliable partner to represent you and to be there for every step of your home buying process. You'll find the services offered through Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Cooper & Company Realtors are second to none. So whether you are buying or selling your home, call us today and let our experience work for you. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Make sure you mark your calendar. If you didn't know, Monday is Labor Day, September 5th, so all schools and offices will be closed for the Mobile County Public School System. I know the kids are excited. They get their first holiday of the year, Corey, so Monday is Labor Day. You, let me ask you, are you you're cooking any meat this Monday, Corey? I will be eating some of the festivities or some of the festive food okay. on Labor Day, but I won't be cooking any. I think I'm going to pull out the grill for the kids and the family this weekend, <laughs> and then we're going we're gonna to burn some meat. I love it. And get, them, get them hooked up. They, they've earned it. They're in middle school now, I so uh, we're going to kind of give them a little treat this Monday for Labor Day. Three minutes remaining here at halftime, Lad Stadium. And, of course, we're able to get up the halftime stats perfect. I was just about to call for it. An interesting first half we have had here at Lad Stadium tonight. Total yardage, you look at Theodore only in their first two games giving up three points total and have given up, you look at 13 so far. So congratulations for Murphy. I say congratulations to them for not quitting. And there's right. no quitting any team that's coached by John McKenzie. You know that. Not and at all. The more and the longer that Theodore lets Murphy stick around, then the more interesting this gets because we know that Coach McKenzie hangs his hat on being a four-quarter team. And we know Theodore likes to run the ball only 45 yards rushing. They have run the ball in situations where we thought they would pass to get first downs, but we noticed toward the end of the second quarter they did throw the ball more, and we saw two opportunities where passes were dropped by Bobcats receivers that could have led to points on the board for the Bobcats. And I think this will be a tale of two halves because we'll see if Eric Carey was able to get his message across to his team loud and clear in regards to them having to play each and every week like it is a playoff game. Right, right. And essentially when you start looking at what 6A Region 1 is, which is to me the best region in the state of Alabama, you have to show up and you can ill afford to give any games away. And here is that 6A poll. We're able to get our uh, system back up. Clay Chalkville still number one with the two, three, and four teams the same from last week. Theodore hops up two spots to six. And Spanish Fort still sits out the top ten, receiving ten votes. Let's take it down to the field. Kimberly Dunn has Coach John McKenzie. I'm here with Coach McKenzie for Murphy High School. Coach, what did you say to your team to motivate them for this second half? Uh, we just trying to get to the third and fourth quarter, being better conditioned than the next team. That's our goal. We want to play better in the second half than we are in the first half. We conditioned for that, and uh, we we trying to just continue to be part of the process of what we're trying to get. Before the game, you talked about how you've only had about 64 days with these players. 46. 46. Oh wow, even less. So how do you feel that? this game is helping you build those connections and relationships with your players? Well, the game is the best experience. You know, practice and, and going through, trying to change the little things, it become hard. And when you get to the game, you just try to see if you, they're on display. So uh, very little penalties. I think we're in good condition. So that's the only thing I'm searching for this particular year. So y'all came at the end of second quarter, had a phenomenal catch from one of your players. Do you feel like that's going to help fuel the rest of this football game? Yeah, momentum is important. And I mean, when you go into the locker room, the last two minutes of a game, which we work on every day, and the last two minutes of a half, we work on that every day. So when you see the fruit of your labor, you know you're doing something right and uh, we're progressing. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. We wish y'all the very best in the rest of the football game. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Kimberly. We do appreciate that. Lastly, let's take a look at that 7A poll. Central Phoenix City still number one. And speaking of one, the Fairhope Pirates move up one spot to three this week, pick up one first place vote. And outside of the top ten, the Foley Lions pick up one vote. Corey, the last time Foley was ranked in the top ten was seven years ago back in 2015. There's a look at your Alabama sports writers' top ten polls of the week. And I think that when you start talking about what Derek Scott has been able to do, it's just a process, the same process that John McKenzie Correct. wants to put in place here for this Murphy Panther program. And got a shout-out uh, Coach McKenzie's folks. He told us to shout him out, Paula Crawford, his sister, and Ronnie Crawford up in Tuskegee up in Tuskegee, also his sister down in Miami. She's watching Carla Mormon. And up in Minnesota, his brother, I remember this name from last year, Larry McKenzie and Pam, they're watching Long from Minnesota. That's right. I mean, that's one of the great parts of being part of the MCPSS television network. You're Correct. able to get your friends and family connected no matter where you are. As long as you do have access to either the Internet or cable, you're able to watch us here on MCPSS television. 20 to 13, Al, our score with the Theodore Bobcats having the lead. We'll see if the momentum of Murphy surges here as we begin the second half. Murphy touched the ball last. They scored, and guess what? It was a two for one. They're getting the ball first here in the second quarter. So Coach McKenzie knew what he was doing by going with that Hail Mary, just down seven points right now as we start the third quarter. Miguel Frias with a nice kick. Brought up by Jalen Edney on the return. Comes to the near side here, just past the 25-yard line. So nice return by Jalen Etney. Murphy's going to take over possession. Impact players that we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast. The quarterback slash defensive back slash everything for the Murphy Panthers, <laughs> TK Barnett, already has one interception in his throne for two touchdowns tonight, along with Braden Jenkins for the Theodore Bobcats. Something to keep an eye on, both players here in the second half. But Murphy, we'll see if they're able to go ahead and get that conditioning going to start the third quarter of action. Panthers come out the halftime, similar formation. Wheeler just to the right as he takes the handoff. From Barnett, falls past the 25-yard line. Second down and about nine coming up here for the Panthers. Derek Lee, the defensive end, 5'11", 225-pound junior. And let's see if the adjustments that Coach Collier is able to make here with his team. And the Bobcats really pride themselves on doing things the right way. They weren't necessarily worried about Murphy. They were worried about doing things the right Bobcat way. And there in the second quarter of action, it kind of didn't go their way. So we'll see if they're able to create a little bit of positive momentum for themselves here in the third quarter defensively. Bunch set of receivers to the top. Barnett back there by himself. They set up the little tunnel screen. Get the blocking. I see no flags. And Edney should have enough for a first down with that reception. David Green does a good job blocking for his teammate down the field. If you go back and look at this replay, look at number nine in blue, folks. Barnett puts it on the money to Edney, and Green does the rest down the field. And it's an outstanding job of helping his teammate to pick up a first down. But there is a flag on the play. And... We'll see what our white hat has. And, Corey, as we're talking about, we didn't see any holes. Some kind of way the, the flag came out, and there was a hole, so it's going to be second down, a spot foul on about 14. As I look to the far side, just past the 20, Corey, I see a rare sight. It's a Thursday night sighting of Pigskin Pete and Ben Thomas here at Ladd Stadium. Both on the sidelines, yep. and they do a great job. Ben for AL.com and Pigskin Pete for WNSP covering high school athletics here along the Gulf Coast. Senior left guard Malachi Howard barking out the commands for the offensive line. Unfortunately, someone may have missed something. We have another penalty. Fire to snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, we play second down. Panthers go back five yards, starting to load up the gun and shoot themselves in the foot. This is not what you want to do here, Corey. You want to stay ahead of the chains, but we saw the Hail Mary that was thrown right before the half by T.K. Barnett, and he demonstrated his arm strength. But you really are playing at an advantage when you're at 
first and, sh you know, second and short or third and short instead of looking at second down and 25 yards to go. Ball on the 22-yard line. Barnett going to hand it off to Wheeler. He bounces off one of those big offensive linemen, and the Bobcats just stand him up. Maybe about a three-yard gain for the Panthers. It's going to be third and long coming up here. When you start talking about a third down and long situation, you just have to make sure if you're Theodore, you don't give up that big explosive play. If right. you don't give up that big explosive play here on third down or don't create any type of silly penalty, you'll go ahead and be able to flip the field. And in this situation here for the Murphy Panthers, they have to make sure they don't turn over the football. Third and 18. Ball's at the 21-yard line. Interesting formation, Barnett under center, and Coach John McKenzie calls a timeout. Ladd has not reset the timeouts here in the second half. They both say zero, but we know that's Murphy's first timeout. I'm guaranteed, Corey, he's got two left. Well, I'm going to definitely go with our statisticians here to our right. Right. Uh, China Powell, along with Matt Moore, knowing that you and I both saw that too, and even though the stadium board does not say that anyone has – has any timeouts remaining, Correct. we definitely know that that is the first call, and it's not a heat timeout. This is not, no. It is a called timeout. Uh, but, again, third and long, if you had special teams miscues the way that Murphy had in the first quarter, which led to a scoop and score, sure did. six points for Theodore in the first quarter, you want to make sure – that if you are not going to pick up this first down, that you keep it clean on special teams because you're deep still in your own territory at your own 21-yard line. You want to make sure that you allow your punter, Enoch Irokozi, to go ahead and flip the field for you, and you need your blocking to stay solid up front in order for him to do that. Have to be cognizant of that. That scoop and score was 31 yards for the big fella for Theodore. Travis Bendolf as he took it in. Play clock under 20. One last Murphy Panther running out to the field. Barnett saying, you need to get over here. We're under 10 seconds. Barnett fakes, keeps, goes up the middle. Interesting play call. It won't be enough to get the first down. But it kind of takes the Panthers off the pressure off a bit. They're not backed up as far as they were. I agree with you. The direct snap right to the quarterback. And he does a good job of making a couple of Bobcats miss. And fourth and it one. Will be a short yardage situation. Fourth and one. And right here is decision making time. You already weren't able to convert on fourth and two earlier in the contest. Now. We'll see if they snap it to the up back or whether the protection is going to come as Murphy makes late substitutions here on fourth and one. We're under five seconds here. McKenzie may have to burn a timeout. Play clock say zero, and there's the flag from Rick Johnson as Coach McKenzie was talking to one of his coaches on the sideline. Yeah. You could see him. Play a game. And I'm with you, Corey. If I'm Theodore, I'm definitely preparing for the uh, – Oops, surprise, fake punt right there with just one yard to go. But that's going to back up the Panthers five. And I love the patience by John McKenzie talking to Benjamin Jackson as he trots out on the field. He was the missing man in this special team situation. But here down you with the penalty at fourth and six, you want to make sure that you don't have this punt blocked and you have great punt protection. Trey Glover setting up at his own 40-yard line. Ira Cozy gets it off, and Glover's going to field it and take off. Nice return by Trey Glover, and we have late flags after he goes out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. And if that is in favor of Theodore, you will get prime real estate and start this drive off deep in the Panthers' territory. But... If it is against Theodore, you're still not in bad field position, but 
Look, so the penalty like is here. against Theodore. Coming up, don't forget, we're going to give you the game of the week, Brain Buster. We'll put a question out there for Corey coming up soon and see if he can answer it co correctly. It'll be our game of the week, Brain Buster. Stick around and find out what that question is going to be. So the penalty called against Theodore pushing them back into Bobcats territory. Maybe a crackback block. I believe so, Corey. That's a 15-yarder right there because the ball is now on the 46, I'm sorry, 47-yard line where they start this drive here, their first time touching the ball in the second quarter. I'm sorry, third quarter. Hand off to Jenkins. They've been doing a good job on the ground tonight for the Bobcats. Nice run as he goes back to almost where Trey Glover went out of bounds after the punt return. Positive yardage, though, and there's a flag on the play. It looks like there's going to be holding called against Theodore. So after a nice positive gain on first down, it's going to be negated. You got holding on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. So we'll replay it. Let's see where they spot this at with it being a spot foul. Shout of John McKenzie as he's talking to his team right there. Puts the ball on the 39-yard line. Next week, we're going up the road to Citronelle. Corey, you might want to bring your earplugs with you because you know they have the horns up there. It'll be Brian and Citronelle. <laughs> when, when the Wildcats score, they, uh, they hit those air horns. They do. <laughs> So uh, don't forget your uh, earplugs when you pack your book bag next week. Hand off to Jenkins. He is a fine runner. Look at him get past the midfield stripe with a big gain on the ground. And that's how you play in front of the chains there for the Bobcats. Andre Woodard, the 5'10", 159-pound senior. That's one of the first times we've called his name tonight. He is one of the impact players that you need to watch out for for the Murphy Panthers in the secondary makes the stop. We'll call it second down and three yards to go now for Theodore. Men in motion for the Bobcats. They go back to Jenkins. He runs behind those big pulling guards and Jenkins is on the way. He takes it in 44 yards, Brayton Jenkins with his second touchdown tonight for Theodore. And I want you to go back and look at Gianni Smith, number 73, the left guard, 5'9", 240-pound junior. You look at him down the field, 73 white folks in the white jersey, running down the field with his running back. Jenkins picks up another pancake. Pancake block there, Al, and watches his running back, Braden Jenkins, make a house call here with 7.34 remaining. Six more on the board for Theodore. Miguel Frias on for the extra point. His last one went off the upright, and this one goes right between the uprights. Theodore's on top, 27-13 for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. My name is Harshini. I'm a junior at Davidson High School, and after graduation, I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently, I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Lowell County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Harshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. Join Homeroom with Renee Phillips and find out the latest homework tips and what's happening inside the schools and classroom. It's Homeroom with Renee Phillips right here on the MCPSS TV network. You're right here with Al Whedon, Corey LeBounty, and Kimberly Dunn. On that extra point, Corey, we have an injured Murphy Panther still down on the field. We weren't able to get a number on him, I believe. Malachi Howard, looks like. Okay. We're familiar with that young man. There is the scoring drive right there. Braden Jenkins, 45-yard run. Two plays, 60 yards, one minute and four seconds taken off of the clock. Had a couple penalties on that drive as we're taking a look there. 
as Howard's being assisted up, Corey. Maybe the cramps here for him in the third quarter of play. He's a young man who was at media days. So had a nice bow tie on, looking real good. He's a member of the Omega Lamplighters. Very well-spoken young man. We know him personally. He works with the crew sometimes. Yeah, he does. <laughs> on some of the off weeks that we have. So always good to see players coming off with their own power. Possibly could be some cramps, as you talked about, Cora. And Malachi Howard, one of the young men who went to Lion Cough Elementary School and now a graduating senior for this Murphy Panther. And Malachi is one of those players that John McKenzie talked about in media days. Sure did. With his vocal role and being one of the players who immediately stepped to him as coming in late to the job, just getting familiar with the teammates and really taking on a cap and a leadership role for the Panthers. He spoke highly of the young man. And you know, providing the gaps to introduce Coach McKenzie to the players because, you know, you needed some guys to buy in because, you know, Coach came in late, I think maybe two, three weeks before media days when we saw him uh, during this summer. The latest I've ever seen a head coach take a job um, as far as trying to prepare your team and the identity of this Murphy Panther team. And Coach McKenzie's done a wonderful job of getting the kids and the coaches and – Embracing the gap and the bridge with the alumni and everyone that's involved with the Murphy Mystique. And, again, just trailing a little bit here, 27 to 13. But Murphy Panthers under McKenzie are trying to show a little life here by not quitting and giving up. Jalen Edney with the return for the Panthers. Brings it out to about the 16. So Murphy's going to get the ball at their own 16 First yard line. But had an opportunity at first series, but could not capitalize. End up going backwards and had to punt to Theodore, and they immediately scored in two plays. Had a couple penalties in between. But it was two plays that counted for the score. But that drive. was huge for Theodore to answer it was. and get off of the scoring drought that they had because you look up going 14-0 to zero and then all of a sudden you look at the scoreboard and it's 20-13. to 13. The Panthers here under TK Barnett, let's see if they're able to answer the score of the Bobcats. Gives it to Wheeler and he is wrapped up and brought down Boy, by Damon Sullivan all in the backfield making that tackle. Sullivan's had a decent game tonight, Al. And sure has. Has been active defensively from his inside linebacker position, and it'll bring up second down and 11 yards to go for the Murphy Panthers. Ball's on the 15-yard line. Coach McKenzie said T.K. Barnett, he's a special kid. Now, he's familiar with a lot of kids. He used to play park ball here before he transferred off to Nebraska with his mom, but she was able to transfer back to the area, so that's how he's back playing with the Panthers. And he also told us, Corey, he's a heck of a basketball player as well, so we, we may get to see Mr. Barnett on the hardwood soon. I know Andre Epps always wants to see this football team do well, but as soon as the football season comes to an end, T.K. Barnett will have an opportunity <laughs> to bounce the basketball as well for Murphy. So his number is already pulled. Third and 11 coming up here for the Panthers. Pinned back at their own 15 yard line. Wheeler just to the right of Barnett. Receiver goes into motion. And unfortunately, Corey, we have a stoppage in play a flag in the Theodore secondary thrown by one of the officials. Try to get the call here from Rick Johnson as his officials are telling him what the penalty is. Fire snap. Play a game. Offense. Five yards. We play third. Only our second delay of game penalty tonight for him. Both of them, unfortunately, for the Panthers. One on their previous series right before the punt. So third and 16 coming up here. 
Barnett behind the line of scrimmage. He throws it, trying to connect with Edney, have some contact, but Edney is sure to hold on to the pigskin. No flags as he brings that ball in at the 35-yard line of Theodore. Again, T.K. Barnett shows his arm and his elusiveness. As you look at this time, he has pocket presence, steps up into the pocket, rolls to his left, and throws back across his body. A good job of high-pointed Jalen Edney comes away with a clutch catch for the Panthers and also Malachi Howard back in the game for the Murphy Panthers on that last pass protection set. And that's a huge first down for Murphy. Empty set is Barnett. And we have a flag. I don't know if the play clock actually reset there, Corey. The flag does come out. But they're calling Offense. it delay of game. Five yards. Replay first down. And one of the things I'm looking at, wow. John McKenzie talking to his quarterback, T.K. Barnett, about making sure that they quickly go ahead and beat that play clock. Because you don't want to beat yourselves, especially when you have a big-time play that gives you a lot of momentum. You don't want to negate that momentum going backwards in the wrong direction. Second delay of game penalty on this drive. First and 15, ball on the 40. Similar formation. Up the middle, up the gut goes T.K. Barnett. He's tackled. That's going to be an easy personal and foul. And we can see that Christian Boyd kind of gave a little late tug, but the officials are going to throw the penalty flag, flag, flags as Barnett is the last one getting up off the turf. And that would have been good for positive yardage, and now you just come in and you're going to get that unsportsmanlike late hit called against Christian Boyd well after the whistle is blown. Coming right into your living room, right there. And T.K. Barnett does get up a little bit slow, but again, folks, this young man plays both sides of the football. I think we're uh, having our heat time out right now, Corey, I believe, after they give the penalty. We're at 556. There's the penalty. We'll take a break and come back, bring you some more action. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hello, I'm Katrina Frazier. And I'm Deborah Robinson. And we would like to be your next Realtors. As homeowners, we know how confusing it can be searching to find that perfect home that fits your needs and budget. For that reason, it's important to have a reliable partner to represent you and to be there for every step of your home buying process. You'll find the services offered through Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Cooper & Company Realtors are second to none. So whether you are buying or selling your home, call us today and let our experience work for you. We're back at Lab People Stadium, Al Whedon, Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. Theodore's up 27-13. Well, Corey, I thought we were taking our heat timeout. The officials kind of took their time and marked off the penalty, but they never stopped the game. So it's a long pass there thrown by Barnett, intercepted by Theodore. Braylon Robinson. It looks like Braylon Robinson. Official timeout. And T.K. Barnett was able to step into this throw. And as he did, just overthrew his intended wide receiver. And because he overthrew him, Jalen Edney was not able to come away with it. And instead, the Theodore Bobcats with another huge turnover as they are leading 27 to 13 with 543 remaining here in the third quarter of action. So a turnover for each team, both interceptions. All right, we have our official heat timeout right here, Corey. So we'll do the game of the week brain buster question. All right, Corey LeBounty, Theodore's first ever playoff appearance was in 1980. What team defeated them in the first round? And you know what? Let's keep it going. Third week of multiple choice for you, Corey. So A, Fairhope, B, Shaw, C, Murphy, and D, Davidson. What team defeated them in the first round in their first ever playoff appearance? Stick around. We'll reveal that answer later on. Hopefully, Corey will get it correct. I know you love multiple choice, buddy. I do love multiple <laughs> choice, but in 1980, I was three years old. So I'm going to have to 
go back and rock the cradle in my brain to try to go ahead and knock this multiple choice answer out. And folks, if you wanna, if you're watching on our broadcast and you wanna help Corey Labonte out on this brain buster, he's asking for Go help. right ahead and put it in the app and put it in those comments. So that was a good one, Corey. That was bit. a good one. <laughs> Say, go ahead. So you're not phoning a friend. You're asking no, for absolutely. technological help. Absolutely. I'll take all the technological help we can get right now. First to 10, ball on the 12-yard line of Theodore after that Braylon Robinson interception. First to 10, Pumpkin. Little play action completes to Tavares Sullivan. And he's weaving his way past the 35-yard line up to the 38. Coming from their own 12-yard line, getting away from being deep in their own territory, Theodore, Theodore is able to come away with definitely a positive. And they're going tempo here, Al, something that they we are. really haven't seen a lot of since the first quarter of action. And off the Jenkins. He plows ahead for about one or two. Helmet comes off, and we have a flag on the play. And we'll see what the official call is here as we were looking at the ball action and not the line of scrimmage action in that situation. Demetrius Davis lost his lead there. So unsportsmanlike against both teams, they'll offset personal fouls. So it's second down and about eight yards here coming up for the Bobcats. Jenkins in the backfield with Rigby. Play action, back to Sullivan on the slant route. Panthers giving chase as they punch him out of bounds at about the three-yard line. Tavares Sullivan with a big-time reception. Brian Jackson, the 5'6", 150-pound sophomore corner, fell down on the play, and that allowed for the explosive yards after catch. And you start looking at the moves that were put on by Sullivan, and Sullivan's just a tad bit short of punching it in to get six for this Bobcat team, but it's gonna have the ball marked at the three yard line of the Murphy Panthers. Bobcats back in the red zone once again. And it looks as if Coach Eric Collier walking out onto the field has called a timeout with 4.53 remaining here in the. So maybe, I don't know if that was a timeout or not, Cor, because uh, now Theodore runs right back onto the field because Coach Collier was coming out as if he was going to talk to the team. But Ladd still says it's three, and Murphy still has two timeouts. Having some audio problems here right now. But we're going to stay here. Braden Jenkins up the middle. There we go. We're back. As he is snagged at the line of scrimmage, second and goal for Theodore. You start looking at that big-time stop by Matthew Stallworth. That's what you have to have. You have to be big in the red zone area and try to hold these Theodore Bobcats from scoring another six. Be another big momentum swing if the Panthers can hold the Bobcats to three here, Al. Correct. Damon Sullivan bringing him in, but he has snagged behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Third and goal coming up for Theodore. Jabaris Chambers from his Mike linebacker position. 5'10", 183 pounds, sophomore. Back-to-back -back stops here. It's gonna bring up third down and goal to goal from the Panther five yard line. One name we haven't called tonight running, Andrew Palmore. Coach Collier told us 
You know, he's got the one, two, three punch this season, but we've yet to call Palmore's name tonight. Jenkins in the backfield. They're rolling out Rigby. No flags on the play. Fourth and goal coming up now for the Bobcats. And you do see oh, penalty flags there that we are go. thrown oh, at the line that. of scrimmage. I was looking more toward near the end zone area, Corey, but the flags are up near the line, as you just pointed out, thanks to China Powell as well. So this may be something with the big uglies up front. Got holding on the offense, 10 yards. Replay third down. So where I was looking for the hold, it wasn't. It was on the opposite side at the line, so that's going to push the Bobcats back a bit. But if you're Eric Collier, you're not happy at all. No, you're not. With this red zone execution because you already have the football right at the three-yard line, and now you're looking here at a fourth down situation. I don't know if the penalty was declined here. It must have been It declined. had to be. The ball's still so sitting now, on the four. You're fourth down and goal to go with the five-yard line. Let's see if the momentum can shift to Murphy. Trip receivers to the right. Cameron Rigby going to the big guy, Cam Johnson. You talked about him earlier, Corey. And they finally call his number, and he delivers with a four-yard reception. Well, that's what you have to do when you're six foot five in the red zone area. Just throw it up to the six foot five, 200 pound senior who has verbally committed to Vanderbilt University. So for those wanting to know, where's the guy from Vanderbilt? Well, <laughs> there he is as he goes ahead and he climbs the ladder in the red zone and a wonderful, nice touch by Cameron Rigby to the big fella, Cameron Johnson, who scores his first touchdown of the season. Extra point is good. Scores 34-13, Theodore in control. The Environmental Studies Center is a natural sciences education facility designed to provide unique learning experiences. In addition, wildlife rehabilitation plays a vital role each day at the center, featuring more than 500 acres of rich woodlands. The center affords teachers, students, and the general public an opportunity to experience firsthand the natural environment. Environmental Studies Center, it starts with us in the Mobile County Public Schools. We welcome you back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Corey Libana, we came out of halftime, and Theodore has responded with two touchdowns in the third quarter already. Well, you look at that quick 14 that they scored in the first quarter. Yep. So when they score, it's in burst. Early in the fourth, here early in the third. Now we're late in the third quarter of action, and they're kicking off, and we'll see if the Murphy Panthers are able to answer now trailing 34 to 13. Jalen Etney on the return up the middle he goes and he is met by a Theodore Bobcat near the 19 yard line. Take a look at that scoring drive. Eight plays, 88 yards and a five yard reception to the big guy going to Vandy, Cam Johnson. And that's what you want to see from a young man who really probably gain a lot of confidence in that throw and catch because that's really the first time that I've seen the quarterback really look at him and know that that's his primary wide receiver. I agree. And with that big time goal line situation, a great dialed up play by offensive coordinator Kendall Gibson. And Theodore comes in averaging 33 points per game and has really eclipsed that so far tonight. They have hit their average, they sure have with the score 34-13. Murphy in a familiar spot, pinned back in their own territory, ball on the 18-yard line. And a familiar sound we have heard, the sound of Rick Johnson's whistle. <laughs> Rick Johnson getting a lot of air time tonight. That is Murphy's third delay of game this quarter alone, Corey. Yeah, that's a situation to where you just have to really speed up the tempo if you're the quarterback and making sure you're keeping an eye on that play clock. And here it is with 15 seconds to go. They're still struggling to really get the play 
going as they dig into the line of scrimmage with 10 seconds remaining now on the play clock. And now we know a couple of years ago they changed the rotation of how the play clock, the 40 to a running 25. Maybe that's something Barnett wasn't used to playing in Nebraska because, you know, it's going a bit quicker here. No question about it. And Travis Bendolf almost took the handoff away from T.K. Barnett. Sure as soon as he extends, there's Bendolf swallowing up the running back. And we talked about him being an impact player. And he definitely had a big impact on that handoff by the Murphy Panthers. And now you're looking at second down and close to 27 yards to go now to get a first down. Ball on the seven-yard line. Barnett positioned at about the two to take this snap. They give it to Kentrell Wheeler. As he picks up a couple, it's going to take Murphy to third down. This is not the position John McKenzie wanted his Murphy Panthers to be in here in the third quarter. Not behind the sticks offensively for sure, and you have that momentum, which was really going into halftime, what you really wanted, trailing 20 to 13 score, and right as we ended the half, at triple zeros and here coming out in the third quarter it's really been all theodore and again no quit in murphy we'll see if tk barnett can come up with something amazing here on third down murphy sets up the screen wheeler hauls it in he has some blocking downfield he's close I believe he has enough to pick up the first down as he has passed the 30-yard line, and the chains should move. Third down and 18-yard to go. A nice screen pass design, and good job of pu pulling it in by Wheeler. And he just wills his way to getting close to a first down as you look at Murphy. If they don't have the Holding. first down, it's going to be close. Offense. I didn't see the penalty yards. flag. We play third down. It came out late, Corey. It was near the 20-yard line near us. So it was nearest the sidelines right. of the Murphy Panthers was that penalty. So it looks like they caught one of the big fellas for the line holding as Wheeler was coming out with that screen pass he received. So that's going to push the Panthers back to the 10-yard line. And it'll be third and long once again, almost third and 20 coming up here, Core. Well, it was a safe call. It, it was. It's just, you know, when you're a lineman, you hope that you have one of those officials on the field who doesn't see it and was not able to get away with it. And officially now third down and 20 yards to go. Formation we saw similar. Bunch receivers to the top. Bar Barnett would just hike it and keep it, go up the middle. This time it's a double pass back to Barnett but he has no blockers in front of him. That play took a little while to develop. Well, the throwback to him was low, and because it was low, if he would have caught it on the numbers right at chest level, he would have had a little bit more and time to operate. You look at him receiving this throwback pass, a double pass, but look how low the ball goes, and he has to go down there and get him to where he can't get any really a lot of momentum and a good job of an open field tackle by Devontae Richardson, the outside linebacker, 5'9", 200-pound junior for the Bobcats. Javar Sullivan and Trey Glover back to receive the punt. Ira Cozy at the one-yard line. He's got to be careful. High snap. I believe that punt was tipped by one of the Bobcat players, and they're going to stay away from it, which is smart to do. And we have all zeros here at the end of the third quarter. Theodore is going to get great field position. Let's take a look here, Corey. Possibly could have been tipped, but Ira Cozy got it off just in time. So that's the end of three. Theodore is on top, 34-13. Ira Cozy doing a wonderful job of making sure that they're able to punt that away because he's already had one blocked, and that would have been devastating going into the fourth quarter. All right, Corey, let's see if any of your friends hit you up on Facebook or MySpace or whatever, AOL, whatever. <laughs> it's time to talk about the Brain Buster. All right, game of the week, Brain Buster. Oh, the question went away. Let's bring the question back for Corey. All right, we don't want to cheat him. Theodore's first ever playoff appearance was in 1980. What team defeated them 
in the first round of the playoffs. All right, so I'm a Westmobile guy. Okay. Um, it's either Shaw or Murphy. I am going to go Murphy. All right, you're going to do C for Corey. There you go. All right, Miss Diane hit the button. We'll see. And Corey LeBounty, you are correct. All Murphy right. beat them 24 to 21. Here's your plus one. Okay. That year, Theodore won the region. That was the first time they ever went to the playoffs in their first ever region championship. Right now, they are the number two ranked school in Mobile County Public Schools with 14 region titles. That's pretty impressive when you start talking about the history. Just from 1980, 42 years, and 14 region titles. You know, Mr. Sanderson, the principal at Murphy, just mentioned here in four years they'll be celebrating 100 years right. of Murphy High School and the tradition that goes along with the Panther program. But when you start talking about the matchup between Theodore and Murphy, dating back to that 1980 playoff game, it, it always hurts and stings. And when you're an alumnus of that school with your first loss, you can remember, I remember losing <laughs> right. to where I played my last high school football correct, game. And correct, correct. I guarantee there are some alumnus watching and sitting in the stands tonight. Good job there, Corey LeBound. Going, going with C for Corey. That's what you always tell me. <laughs> I'm going with C for Corey, Al. <laughs> Braden Jenkins, he's going up the middle behind his blockers directing traffic. Nice run by Jenkins as he gets to the 25-yard line. Here, look at the third quarter statistics and that rushing total coming up for the Bobcats, Corey. Yeah, the rushing total has been very impressive. When you start looking at the rushing total for Theodore, it was fairly low. It had not surpassed 100 yards when we were at halftime. Now Theodore trying to get in the gear, rushing the football, 313 total yards. Total yards. Both teams have a turnover. Interception by both quarterbacks thrown. Bobcats continue to keep the ball on the ground. Braxton Clark on that carry right there for the Bobcats. Second to five, a five yard pickup by Clark. Cameron Rigby keeping his cool in control. As Theodore knocks on the door of the red zone once again. Damon Sullivan comes over from defense. This time, Corey, he gets the push he needs as he picks up the first down near inside of the 10. It's been a steady dose of Damon Sullivan as we've not been able to see Paul Moore as we thought that that was going to be the one, two, three punch Correct. tonight. But instead, you've gotten a one, two, a steady dose of Jenkins as well as Sullivan. And there will be a double injury timeout as both teams have an injured player on the field. Let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn. She has a face that's familiar to a lot of folks in the area. Go ahead, Kimberly, who do you have with you today? I'm here with the Public Safety Director, Chief Batiste. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, enjoying the ball game. Well, we're happy to be back here at Ladd Stadium. So can you tell us about some of the extra safety protocols that y'all have put place here at Ladd? You know, LAD is under new management, mm -hmm. and as part of that new management, uh, Mobile Police Department uh, off-duty officers have worked extremely well with Mobile County Public School System and the security firm that they hired to work the ball games. You know, out of something bad, something good should always come out of it, and so what I think is good has come out of it is better collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that there are operational plans that are in place and that they're being followed, mm -hmm. and after every game, making sure that we look back at where we potentially could see where we can improve in security managers are and getting that information to everybody and working to make sure we fill those gaps. Yes, so for parents that may have students here or students at home, how safe is the stadium? Uh, you know, I would say that is as safe as, as we can do it with the, num with the manpower that we have. And again, I think to this point, uh, we've been very fortunate that, you know, the officers have done their job. Mm -hmm. but, but even more importantly, the parents that have come out here yeah. have been cooperative and they've done the things that we've asked them to do. And in fact, they brought their children yeah. <laughs> rather than send their children. And those things are really important to making sure we have a safe environment because 
uh, those are additional eyes that are helping us control what happens within the stadium. Yeah, so what are some of the new safety protocols that are in place in order for people to even get in the game? So, one, you know, in order for someone to come to the ball game, especially if they're attending, they have to buy their tickets online, which is really, a, uh, I think, a very smart move. When mm -hmm. we did it during the COVID protocols, mm -hmm. I think it worked extremely well. So that, that's, that's, in my opinion, has helped a lot. Yeah. Uh, the security at the gates, making sure that there's only one gate on uh, either side, uh, either the home team side or the visiting side, which gives us more manpower to ensure that, uh, one, we're screening well as people are coming in through the gate. And again, just the cooperation from the people that have been here, understanding that there are new security measures and there are things that we will and we won't allow. And so those things have really helped us. And then, of course, what you guys have done in the school system, talking to your kids, mm -hmm. letting them know what your expectations are when they come out to the ball games. Yes. So everyone working together and doing their part. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, thank you so thank much you. for telling us all about all the wonderful things going on at LAD and for doing your part in helping keep us all safe. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. Looking forward to a great season. Uh, us too. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. And as Public Safety Director Lawrence Batiste wraps it up, Theodore wraps up that drive with an 18-yard pass. And I believe, Corey, that's Mr. Vanderbilt, Cam Johnson. And, and it's just a matter of time. He's gone two games without touchdowns. And here it is, game number three. He now has two touchdowns, two right here in this game alone. He's just too big for the cornerback on the play. And when you're six foot five and Brian Jackson pretty much put on an island against someone who gives you up six inches, a big time catch, a best, a better throw because you can have six foot five out there, but if you don't throw a catchable ball, that's what's more important. Six more, added on with the extra point, seven more now, 41-13 our score out. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Next week, make sure you join us as we go up Highway 45 to Citronelle. It'll be Bryant versus Citronelle. This is an out-of-region contest. Bryant, a 7A team, and Citronelle, Corey, now back down in 5A. Yeah, I mean, when you start talking about 5A again, we just had Public Safety Director Lawrence Batiste on. He is a BC Rain Red he, Raider He sure graduate. is. He sure so is, Corey. I know that he had to be super-duper happy with the outcome of last Thursday's game, as are all the Theodore faithful right now, 41 to 13. Our score, five play drive, 42 yards, one minute and 44 seconds, taking off of that clock. But you start talking about 200 pounds, six foot five wide receiver, Cameron Johnson. I've been asked, where is he? Where folks, tonight he's shown you where he is and why Vanderbilt has offered this wide receiver. There he is. 10-16, Al Weed and Coral Bounty. Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. Statisticians China Powell and Matt Moore bringing y'all the action here Thursday night football. Theodore versus Murphy. As we said, next week we're going to Citronelle, but it will be a Friday game, so we'll be in our normal position. Murphy just lets that ball go, and it goes out of bounds just as the last minute. Free as Bobcats were trying to down it at the one, Corey, but it just trickled out of bounds. Yeah, it did, and one of the things I want to point out and give a special shout out to Will James. Will James had a broken collarbone in week zero versus the Baker Hornets and Will Jones. Will James, a phenomenal defensive back, Absolutely. special teams player for Eric Collier, and we wish him a speedy recovery for the Theodore Bobcats. That's why you don't see him playing tonight, and that's something that you can definitely know as the season progresses. If he continues to get healthy and is able to play the rest of this season, it'll be a difference maker for Eric Collier and the Theodore Bobcats. It sure will. Up 41-13, to 13, all in control right now. And we have backup quarterback James Holbrook in the ball game. 
T.K. Barnett drops down to play wide receiver. So Coach McKenzie is going to put him in a skill position role. Jalen Edney with that reception goes forward about five or six yards. Second down and short coming up for the Panthers. Positive yardage. Ten minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of action with Theodore leading 41 to 13. Murphy has yet to score here in the second half, Al, as they had that Hail Mary right before the second quarter of action ended. Another quick out by the Panthers. And a massive hit laid by Theodore. I don't know if that was helmet to helmet or not, but it was a, yeah, there's a flag. massive hit. Definitely a flag on that play as we're able to take it the First look at the replay. And it'll be a, a penalty flag as that was Navante you, Richardson delivering that hit there. You Man. lead with your helmet though, and that's the thing about it. As the wide receiver almost spun back into it, I don't know if we can see that one more time as you start looking at Richardson leading with his helmet. Folks, you can't do that. You have to keep your heads up. You want to see the face mask right there. Target. He leaves his feet. On the defense. And mm. that's definitely 15 yards. a targeting personal foul. You don't see any face mask. All you see is the crown and the top of the helmet. Anytime you see that, that's a very dangerous play in football, and it'll yep. cost you 15 every time. Great job to Buddy Charles in the truck for bringing that replay back for us. When I saw that initial hit, like, man, that's – Got to be targeting there. So Murphy does gain the additional yardage now into Bobcat territory. Ball on the 36 yard line of Theodore. Holbrook saw some extensive playing time last week against Sarah Land. So this is not his first game or first rodeo this week. I didn't see a receiver in the area for that ball. Don't know if that was a miscommunication with the quarterback or not. Wheeler was the intended wide receiver. It was supposed to be a delayed screen there. Yeah, I saw it. I, I just didn't see Wheeler anywhere. Yeah, it never materialized. Right. And on the top of your screen, you had T.K. Barnett wanting the football in single coverage as the cornerback rolled back in coverage and definitely not going to play him tight man-to-man. -man. And you also now see Barnett back at the top of your screen again We'll see if that's the mismatch as the cornerback gives him a 10-yard cushion. They've yet to attempt one to Barnett since he's come out and played receiver on this series. That pass completed to Tyler Hodge, our first time calling his name tonight. Third down and about eight yards coming up Gabriel for the Panthers. Watson, outside linebacker, 5'10", 200-pound sophomore on the stop, Al. Wheeler just to the left of James Holbrook. T.K. Barnett at the top of the screen. They give it to Wheeler on a quick draw. Up the middle he goes. He should have enough to move the chains and pick up a first down for the Murphy Panthers. And that's what's important. Positive yardage, moving the sticks. Your offensive line still trying to get to that second level as your running back is able to get to that second level. And that's just a nice shoulder tackle by Cameron Pruitt, the 6'3", 200-pound junior outside linebacker. First and 10, ball on the 29. Wheeler once again keeping those wheels rolling for the Panthers as he explodes into the red zone. So it's going to be first and goal coming up here for Murphy. And I'm looking at Eric Collier on the far sidelines. He doesn't want his players to get caught looking at the scoreboard. Correct. Again, in two weeks of play, they only gave up three points. Quick pass to Jalen Edney. He can't bring it in, goes incomplete. Second and goal coming up here for the Panthers. So they've yet to target T.K. Barnett since he's now playing wide receiver with Holbrook coming into the ball game. Don't know if they're using him as a decoy core. Well, we'll see if T.K. Barnett, we know he's a tremendous playmaker, and we know that Murphy also has other weapons, and their key wide receiver, Jalen Edley and Ben Jackson, have not had a bad night, but we'll see where they decide to go. 
Hand off to Kentrell Wheeler. Look at him go. Inches up toward the three or maybe the two yard line. Third and short. Actually third and goal coming up here for Murphy. Have an injured theater of Bobcat. I believe that's Landon Collier, number 15. He's hopping along. That's Coach Collier's son. Third down Panthers. So he's going to hop out. Right now, I got a break. Let's take a look at some ball games taking place tomorrow, Corey. We're the only game in town tonight, but tomorrow the action real goal goes down. Baker and Davidson, that game will be played at Baker. And Coach uh, Norman told us, yeah, they're, they're going to be the home team. We'll take it down to the field right quick. Holbrook drops the ball, but Johnny on the spot, Kentrell Wheeler, falls on it. That could have spelled disaster for the Panthers Ball right there. And it looks like Collins, excuse me, Collier on the sideline has cramps as he's being stretched out by the trainers. I saw but that across the field there, yeah. Now you're looking at fourth down and goal to go after that fumble recovery from the six-yard line. We'll see if there's a stop here for the Panthers to try to get some type of momentum before the heat timeout in the fourth quarter. And that's something I suspect that they go back to T.K. Barnett here, fourth down. And John McKenzie's going to use his second timeout of the second half here at 627. So if we're able to get that uh, graphic back up, take a look at the uh, – Ball game's taking place tomorrow. As we said, Coach Steve Norman told us, yes, it's Davidson's home game, but Baker's going to be the home team tomorrow night. So we'll just end it right there. But Daphne visiting Bryant, MGM at Foley, Blunt at Robertsdale. That's a good one right there. Sarah Lynn and St. Paul, that's a good 6A Region 1 battle coming up, Corey. And also that Baldwin County Spanish football game might turn out to be pretty good as well. I'm looking forward to the Faith Academy Gulf Shores matchup. That is going to be another book. Good ball game tomorrow night as well. Elberta traveling down to Williamson. Biker goes up to Citronelle. That LaFleur UMS Wright, that was a LaFleur home game, but they flipped it. So now UMS Wright is going to host that. But you're right, Corey. Two games I'm looking at that I'm going to possibly try to watch tomorrow because we're off is the Sarah Land St. Paul's and Faith Academy Gulf Shore. Those should be two good ball games. Alberta and Williamson being held right here at Ladd People's Stadium. Right. The Williamson Lions having a chance to be the home team as they played the LaFleur Rattlers a week ago, and it was LaFleur's home game here at Ladd People's. So I'll be on the PA for that game tomorrow night for Williamson. We'll see what Nate McDaniel and the Alberta Warriors have in store. But 6.27 now, and you're at 4th and goal to go from the six-yard line. All right, let's see what the Panthers have in store right here. They brought Barnett back in to quarterback. He's been a wide receiver on this entire series. He rolls out to the left, and he throws it behind Jalen Etney incomplete. Etney had the blockers in front of him, but the pass behind him. I think it's because of the pressure of Devontae Richardson from his outside linebacker position. I don't know if we're able to see the pressure by Richardson there on the replay. He almost came untouched. And if you're able to get any type of pass protection on Richardson, that pass would have definitely been complete. And instead, it will be a turnover on downs. And now the Theodore Bobcats take over deep in their own territory. And we'll see if this will be the heat timeout called. It is the official heat timeout. Rick Johnson signals that at 620. So we're going to take a break right here. Theater on top, 41 to 13. Giving you a special edition of Thursday Night Football. We'll be back with more action. Don't move. Theater is on top. If you look at the numbers, Mobile County Public Schools is making great strides. With more than 53,000 students, 7,000 employees, and 90 schools, we are consistently increasing our four-year graduation rate and our first-class pre-K program. We continue to strive for national recognition and continue to prepare our students for the global workforce. And we do all of this with one goal in mind, to equip and empower college and career-ready graduates. Mobile County Public Schools, we're learning today, leading tomorrow. Don't forget to mark your calendar. Monday is Labor Day, September 5th. All schools and offices 
but the Mobile County Public School System will be closed in observance of Labor Day, the unofficial end of summer. But as I said last week, Corey, around these parts, summer can go on and on <laughs> and on. I tell you what, the weird thing about this week is we actually had three days of consecutive the sunshine. The sun came out, <laughs> Corey. Did. I couldn't believe it. It did. It was the exact opposite of last week <laughs> no with, all, with all the rain. Up the middle for the Bobcats goes Braden Jenkins. He's been running that rock consistently tonight. So, Corey, speaking of Jenkins right there, who are you thinking about for your career tech education player of the ball game? I have two guys in mind. I think Cameron Rigby has That's one had of a them. very solid game. That's one of them. I think Braden Jenkins That's another one. has had a solid game. You're reading my mind, Corey LeBan. Those are the two guys I've been thinking about. Second and five coming up here. It's kind of been a double dose of punch of Jenkins and Rigby. There's Jenkins once again. He cuts back in the green. I like how he just kind of slid right there, Corey. And he knew to stay in bounds. That's right. Keep the oh, clock going. You do want the clock to continue to run, and that's just a very heads-up play, knowing that you do have the first down of action, and you slide down, and when you go back and you look at this film, you have to be pleased with that decision-making there by that young man not to run out of bounds. First and 10, ball on the 31-yard line. And now as we start going back and looking at my checklist on things that Theodore needed to do, they needed to develop depth. And so far tonight, they've been able to spread the football around. And there's another big time run as Theodore is showing that they definitely want to pound the pigskin. And we knew Eric Collier needed to do that and create Murphy miscues as right. we take a look at this run here by Jenkins. Just a lot of patience and cutting back. And he shows his elusiveness, the 5'10, 175 pound senior. You look at Murphy and what they wanted to do, they wanted to control the clock, felt that conditioning was key, and wanted to take away Theodore's ground and pound. But Theodore here in the second half have definitely been able to ground and pound. Flag on that play is going to negate the big run by Jenkins. Going to bring Theodore back to the 25-yard line. And for folks who don't know, John McKenzie didn't have a chance to have a spring with this Murphy Panther team. He took over in July. Sure did. And he has done a great job, all things considered, of letting this Murphy Panther team know he believes in them. And another gaping hole for Theodore that will get close to a first down. And it definitely will bring up a short down and distance situation. But both quarterbacks, when you start looking at their numbers. Yeah, they are. Very impressive. Rigby does have an interception tonight. Only two turnovers in the ball game. And ironically, the interception he threw was to T.K. Barnett, right. <laughs> the quarterback for Murphy. But uh, you can see the big numbers right there from Rigby, 222, 9 for 19 with two touchdown passes. And we've had a well, just a direct snap. Trey Glover, I'm sorry, not Trey Glover. A little trickeration by Theodore right there. Direct snack to E.J. Simmons. Jerry Bowie. And Bowie reception. hauls it in. Simmons back up quarterback as Coach Collier slips out Rigby, but a flag on the far side near the Theodore sideline, near oh, the 40-yard wow. line. Legal participation. That one may be coming. Man, Cor, I'm, I'm reading the graphic, and they slip in the back up quarterback wow. on us. The old, sh the old switcheroo. Let's see what the call here from Rick Johnson says. On the offense, five yards, previous spot. Replay second down. So illegal participation, that's going to negate that Simmons to Bowie connection. It'll be second down and about seven coming up here for the Bobcats. And I think we've seen the last of Rigby because Simmons is still on the field, Corey. 
Well, that was a nice play. That's the way to come into the ball game, make they, your presence known. Yeah, absolutely. When you start creating and developing that depth, that's one of the things Eric Collier definitely wanted to do and needed to do for his team to instill confidence. And speaking of depth, they've pretty much taken out the starters, and we have a flag on the play. Flag on the play. False start on the offense. Five yards. Replay, second down. All right. So that's going to push the Bobcats back five more yards. We're still at second down, so it'll be second down and 12 coming up for Theodore here. E.J. Simmons taking over as quarterback. And Corey, I have to say it again, there's <laughs> another yellow rag Don't on the start. field. Another the false start against the Bobcats. So you, you don't want to finish the game sloppy. And what you no. start to see is when you do make those substitutions, you're having an opportunity as a backup offensive lineman or even as a starting offensive lineman, more importantly, to go ahead and have great discipline and to finish the game strong. And now it's going to bring up second down and long for this Theodore Bobcat offensive squad. It looks as if Cordemar – my chart, the offensive line is the same. They've just changed the, the guys in the skill positions, brought in all the second stringers. But it could be the, how do you call it, the communication between Simmons and the line. And another flag is on the field at near the 30-yard line near us on the near side here. And where that was, that was right when. That's classic holding. It really is. Yep. Right when he was trying to bounce outside the numbers where that flag was thrown. It'll back. Holding up some on more. the offense. Ten yards. We spotted a foul. Three plays, second down. So that's going to push the Bobcats back. It's going to be second and long here. So they're going to spot the ball at the 18-yard line. It is still second down, Corley Bound. And when you start talking about execution down the stretch, the ball has been marked for play. The clock is running here. And Theodore just has to try to get a playoff without there being another penalty and flag. And another penalty flag. I think that may be the fourth consecutive flag. Fire to the snap. Encroachment on the defense. So this one's Five against yards. Murphy. So that's second and 27. Second, down. second 27 is going to turn into second and 22. Deuces wild here for the Bobcats. But once again, I mean, I can't emphasize enough Will James and his ability to be healthy moving forward here probably won't get him back to the latter part of the season. But what a tremendous leader he's been for this Theodore Bobcat Nation. Right, we finally get second down. Braxton Clark with the carry as the Panthers wrap him up for a slight loss. It'll be third and long coming up here for Theodore. Woodard and Mitchell on the stop, the bandit, and Will Linebacker on the stop for the Murphy Panthers. The clock continues to run, and Theodore in no hurry to snap the football on any possession. Yeah, we're under three minutes, Core. I think we're safe to say we could probably put out our career tech education player of the game here and uh, we're able to get that up possibly after this play. Third and 25 is what Ladd is calling it. And I hear the whistle of Rick Johnson in my in my headphones there, <laughs> Corey. He's getting a lot of air time. Play a game on the offense. I think Five yards. Some of the Replay third down. I think some of the officials from our previous game, they might they might give him a little business this week because, you know, we had some audio difficulties in week right, one and week two. But right. Rick Johnson's been on the air all night he, tonight, yeah, Corey. Yeah, he's been on it as <laughs> we've probably had over 18 or 19 penalty flags total thrown in tonight's contest. Hand off to Clark once again as he's trying to stiff arm one of the Panthers. Just past the 25-yard line. All right, our career tech education player of the ball game. Who's it going to be? Let's see. Cameron Rigby, quarterback for the Bobcats. I, I would agree with that, Corey. We saw the stat there in the quarterback comparison. 
and you called it early. I was waiting to see how the outcome was going to be. It literally was a yeah. tale of two halves tonight. It really was, and you start talking about what was that halftime speech that was given right. by Eric Collier. I know we did have audio difficulties going into halftime to where we didn't get a chance to really hear from Coach Collier, but I know that he was concentrating and worried about cleaning up the mistakes mm -hmm. and Theodore beating Theodore. Um, and that's something that Coach Collier does not like to see is for his team to beat themselves right. in any phase of the game. And they gave up that special teams play that was huge for and really hurt them. It was huge for the Panthers as well as giving up a lot of explosive long-thrown balls by quarterback T.K. Barnett. And it went right before halftime and to Hail Mary. Right before the half. Right that before was the half. Huge explosive play for the Murphy Panthers, but they weren't able to muster up enough offense in the second half. As a matter of fact, they had positive yardage, but nothing positive on the scoreboard. Correct. First down, Panthers. Back on the field, Holbrook quarterbacking for the Panthers. And he lets one fly. And he does connect. Hauling it in, a name we've called a lot for Murphy tonight, Jalen Edney. And I love the fact that how he threw this football and led his wide receiver. Holbrook threw it to a spot to where Edney was the only one that could run under it, and Edney does a wonderful job of looking it in. We had a few drop balls in the first half sure did. that we have not seen in the second half. So the wide receivers have done an outstanding job of making the adjustments in tonight's contest also. First to 10, ball on the 15. Murphy trying to get a pride score if they can. T.K. Barnett catches it. Unfortunately, he runs out of real estate. Incomplete. Second and 10 coming up for Murphy. 49 seconds remaining now. And, again, you've seen the athleticism of T.K. Barnett. I think he's put everybody – on notice, especially St. Paul's <laughs> next week. That's right. The type of athletic ability he has. Hand off to Wheeler as he is tackled for a slight loss. Murphy playing to the end and Theodore playing to the end as well. Looks like this possibly could be our last play of the ball game. Under 30 seconds remaining here. Low snap to Holbrook. He tries to fall back on it, picks it up. Clock continues to tick. I wonder if the players are aware. It uh, doesn't look like Coach McKenzie is going to call a timeout, Corey. And the game clock may run out on Holbrook before we can get this playoff, as it does. And Theodore secures the win, 41 to 13. And Corley Bounty not trying to be repetitive, but you called it. It was a game of two halves going into the locker room. The score was 2013. And in the second half, Murphy held scoreless and Theodore opened up. Well, again, you start talking about the adjustments that were made defensively, offensively. You really saw the Theodore Bobcats find a way to dominate the line of scrimmage and eliminate the explosive plays that were had by Murphy as evident in that 44-yard touchdown reception right as we ended right. the first half of action. But Eric Collier talked to his defense. He got the Theodore Bobcats back focused. And you mentioned earlier, Al, they had only given up three points That's in right. two contests. And now when you start talking about a total of 16 points giving up on the season, that's pretty impressive by any standard through three weeks of high school football. It sure is. Theodore came back in the second half. We saw them throwing it with Rigby and running it with Braylon Jenkins as they did a great effort in the second half and basically kept Murphy scoreless. Murphy had opportunities, but they just could not capitalize in the second half. We saw some spurts from them in the first half, but for Theodore, it was almost as if they were kind of playing in a lull in the first two quarters. They came out smoking and then kind of cooled off. 14 to nothing right, right. as we started this contest. We hadn't even hit the heat timeout yet in the sure first quarter before we were at 14 to zero, but Murphy showed no quit and did not give up as a John McKenzie team will never quit, but now we'll go down to the field, Al, and we'll yeah. hear 
from the head coach of the Theodore Bobcats. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn. Coach Collier, congratulations on the win tonight. What does this region win mean for you and your team? Well, we're always happy when anytime you get a region win, mm -hmm. special 6A region one. Uh, but honestly, probably the sloppiest game we've played in a long time. So we're fortunate to come out with a win. Uh, Murphy had a good plan. They come out and played hard. Coaches, kids really played hard all night long. We just didn't play very well. So what do you think your team needs to improve on to prepare for next week's game? Well, you know, the things we talk about all the time. Don't turn it over. We had, we had an interception, and then we had multiple penalties. That's mm -hmm. something we haven't done in a long time. And so we've got to go in there and try to clean some things up just on our end, not, not the opponent, but just on our end. All right, thank you so much, Coach. I'll let you get with your team, and congratulations. All right, Kimberly, we appreciate that. And, Corey, there it is right there, the penalties for Theodore, 14 penalties, don't have the exact yardage, but it looks as if it was in the 100 yards range and one turnover, they had an interception thrown by Rigby. But overall, as Coach Collier talked about, those are the two things he told us coming into the ball game. We have to keep penalties down and no turnovers. Well, Cameron Johnson scored his two touchdowns. He's back on the map again, but you're absolutely right. Turnovers and penalties will be cleaned up next week as Theodore, I do believe, plays Baldwin County. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. For Statistician China Powell and Matt Moore on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn and Corley Bounty, I'm Al Whedon thanking you for joining us tonight for Thursday Night Football. Next week, we're going up Highway 45. It's Bryant versus Citronelle in our next telecast. Have yourself a great and safe long Labor Day weekend.